All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, January 4th, 2024 Planning Board meeting. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Introduction to board members. All the way to my left is Polly Matucci, Jerry Graybill, Don Ganarelli, myself, uh, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, Les Bodwell, and Rick Rains. Um, the first thing we're going to work with today is the planning board position appointments for secretary, chairman, and vice chairman for the 2024 year. Is there any recommendations? I nominate Mike for chair. I will second that. Okay. Further discussion? I guess I'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice we thought you should. Yeah. Great. Thank I, you guys. I recommend Phil as vice chair. Well, hold on. We got a vote. Oh, yeah. oh, we got a vote in and Excuse a me. second. Um, and now, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Now. Now. I recommend Phil as vice chairman. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Wait a minute. Don and who? Don and Paul? Okay. Yeah. I got it. I suppose okay. we should ask Phil if he is willing to accept I it. I am willing to accept that. <laughs> 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 all right, should all in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. Next is the secretary. Um, so secretary role is basically if the chair and the vice chair isn't here in a meeting, they take over and they host the meeting. I, I will nominate Mr. Paul Amatucci because he did a fantastic yes, job in did. both of our absence in the past. I'll second that. Nice. Okay, further discussion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be So what are what are the duties of this? It, it's basically the backup to the backup to host the meeting. Um, in case these two aren't aren't here, you host. And get us caught. And you did a great job the last time. That's yeah. why you got nominated. Because you were whispering in my ear. <laughs> uh, well I can whisper in your ear. All right. Well all right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we Paul. have our appointments for You're welcome, the planning board. Yeah, I just did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <coughs> All right. So next is a public hearing for Berwick Community Garden, conditional use, 20 Public Safety Way, U004, Lot 142, Zone VO. So if you could just come up and just give us a brief description, and then we'll let uh, members of the public speak. I'm Rita Cottrell, 8A uh, Goodwin Street. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just give you a, a quick background. About a year ago, Dennis and I started teaching classes at the library on gardening. So that was sort of our foray into um, living here and being part of the community and being noticed for our abilities to do gardening. So uh, in the spring, through Envision Berwick, it came up that there was an interest in doing a, a community garden. So in April, I sent out a community um, questionnaire survey through social media, and we got really good response. So after that response, it seemed like it would be a good thing to pursue. So we started a site search. And I also started going around to other community gardens in the vicinity. I think I visited 12 altogether. Um, in July, we met before the, uh, or was it June? I think, was it June that we met before the select board? I think it was. And they approved the site. Um, in July, we started doing public meetings, uh, inviting people who were interested in and curious about the garden to come to monthly meetings. We learned a lot from people about what they were looking for, and we took really good notes, and that's when we started with our actual planning part of it. Um, 
in late July, I went to visit Seattle and I visited 12 gardens while I was there. So I've seen a lot of different gardens, all different styles, from little tiny neighborhood pocket gardens up to multi-acred gardens. <coughs> and um, taken all of that information in and it's really helped to inform how we've designed the garden. So we've continued with designing the garden and we think that we've come up with a really great design that will meet the needs of the community. A lot of different kinds of needs for the community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone free to state their comments, questions, concerns? Okay. Hi. I'm Maureen Nikitas, um, Heritage Drive in Berwick. And I'm speaking on behalf of Amrita and her project. Um, I did a little volunteer work at the library garden under her, and um, she did a great successful job there. She's obviously done a lot of research and has a lot of knowledge, so I just want to say yes, that's my vote as a member of the community. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Tom Wright, Cemetery Road. Um, I was at your meeting, you know, last year, <laughs> um, and gave a little bit of a history of, uh, of that piece of property. Um, but I'm going to run through that again for people that are just tuning in now. Um, the site is over at what was the former elementary school, the Estabrook Elementary School. And, uh, the school was built in 1948. And in the late 60s, the addition where the police station is now, the dooring part of that was built. Um, is after the Hussey School was built, the district continued using that for a kindergarten space and Head Start and things like that. But eventually they uh, gave it up and uh, Berwick reacquired it. Um, shortly after that, that's when the police station moved in over there. Um, this used to be the police station here at the time, um, and uh, <clears throat> it was, that was status quo for a few years. Um, about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I guess it was, when uh, the Downtown Vision Committee was formed, the precursor to the Envision Berwick Committee. Um, one of the first things they did as a group was start identifying parcels in town that could be used to promote the community. Um, and that parcel was uh, noticed right away, obviously, as a big open space near the center of town. Is <clears throat> We briefly had a contract with an a outfit out of uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to build assisted living there. They had plans for a, a building with uh, 24 apartments there. I think it was 24. Um, is, uh, but they didn't get their funding at the time, so they couldn't proceed with it. So it was back on the shelf. And you know, a lot of different things were proposed there. And then when Berwick started looking at replacing the fire station and were looking at different sites, uh, the, the fire department did a study about where the growth in Berwick was and where the uh, call, number of calls were. And that study actually showed that a new fire station would be best out on Pine Hill Road. Um, we investigated several different parcels out there. None of them were really I ideal. Uh, and that's when uh, the public in Berwick started asking why we weren't building at the Estabrook School. Um, we did a bunch of research. It came down to a town vote, and the town voted to put the fire station there rather than on Pine Hill. Is. <clears throat> During that whole discussion, there was you no know, talk about what to do with the parcels of land there that were not being used by the police station or the fire department. And uh, a lot of different proposals were put forward, um, including a, a skateboard park, a dog park, um, a music venue, things like that. And at the time, I argued that we needed to really look and see what happened at that site before we decided what would go there. There's always been the intention of the town, it seems like, that something was going to happen there. And when Amrito talked to me about possible places to place a community garden, 
is it seemed like that would be a much less intrusive use of that than a dog park or a music venue or anything like that. So I, I thought that was a good place for it. Uh, I've worked a lot with Dennis and Ann Reader over the last six months towards you know, getting this all set up. It's come together nicely, I think. Um, we've been you know, negotiating with the police department and the fire department about you know, how it's going to impact them. We seem to have come to an agreement about what we need to do to alleviate any future problems. Uh, it, part of part of the uh, the uh, project is going to be extending the walking paths in Berwick, and we're going to be using some of the the tax increment financing money that we can use for uh, promoting the greenways and things like that in Maine, in Berwick, and we're going to be using some of that money to um, probably use that to build the bridge over the the uh, drainage gully there and to promote the uh, pathway up towards Logan Street. So um, that's a brief history of what was there, what went there, and what has been proposed there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you can go. Hi. Hi. Sorry. To <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Jeremy Caston on Blackberry Hill Road. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, keep this very brief. From an Envision Burbank standpoint, a community garden checks off two huge and critical things. And that is community and gardening. Those are... Wholesome and important, and I think the very fabric of Berwick. And I'm proud to support this project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chair, we yep. did have one uh, letter sent in that okay. we should read to the board. Um, it says, Dear members of the planning board, I trust this letter finds you all well. I'm writing to express my concerns regarding the proposed community garden at the fire and police stations, a matter that has warranted careful consideration from all of you. While I appreciate the intent behind the community garden project, I believe it is crucial to consider the several potential issues that may arise due to its proximity to a fire and police stations, bearing in mind that I think there have been some changes since the person who wrote this letter uh, was aware of, of this. My concerns center around the following key points. Security and safety. The nature of the emergency services provided by the fire and police station demands heightened security measures. How will the proposed community garden impact the station's security protocols, considering the potential for increased foot traffic in the vicinity? Emergency services access. It is imperative to ensure unimpeded access to the fire and police station at all times. Will the community garden design accommodate the need for quick and unrestricted entry and exit of emergency services vehicles? Noise and disturbances. Emergency services require a quiet and focused environment. How can we be certain that the community garden activities, events, or gatherings will not disrupt the essential work carried out by our first responders? Collaboration with emergency services. Has there been discussion with the fire and police department to gauge their perspective on the proposed community garden? What measures are in place to address potential liability issues associated with the community garden? I'm assuming all of these concerns have been examined and that any conditions will be made before approving the project. While community gardens are undoubtedly valuable assets, the unique operational needs of our fire and police stations would require a meticulous <coughs> balance to ensure that the community garden complements rather than compromises the vital services provided by our emergency personnel. I respectfully request that these concerns be carefully taken into account. I appreciate your dedication. Sincerely, Lisa Chase, Berwick Select Board. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, we can discuss that. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. <clears throat> nope. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that we close this public hearing. I second that. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? All right. Moving along is the first public comment. It's open to any non-agenda items. 
Okay. Moving on. We have no minutes uh, to approve yet. Not yet. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Then old business, Berwick Community Garden, conditional use, 20 Public Safety Way, U004, lot 142, zone VO. You gotta speak into the mic. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, just oh. so the people at home can hear. Right, you. right. Yeah. Forget about that. There's a copy so you can address them individually. Okay. Um, yeah, so Dennis Jackson, Goodwin Street, Berwick. Okay. Um, we've talked with uh, Chief Town, and um, we've uh, located the you know, position for a stockade fence between the police activities in the garden and that will keep anybody from from wandering off the garden site and become um, in the way of a police department and also keep anybody from walking from near the, the apartments towards the garden so um, I think that issue has been been taken care of um, and then Chief Plant has asked that a chain link fence be placed around the propane tank, and that will be done. Um, and as you may have seen on the um, walk, there is a large rock swale um, between the garden and the um, fire department, and there will be a fence around the garden. So. We don't feel that there is um, likely chance anybody will wander out of the garden and into the space around the fire station. And we've designed the entrance from the parking area in front of the police and fire stations to um, guide people into the garden space without them walking out into the fire station apron um, with the equipment. So. Um, I think uh, safety concerns have been addressed by our design and our communication with the chiefs. Could I, uh, could I ask just for one little piece of clarification in what you just said about the swale that's located between the garden and the fire station? You said when mentioning the swale that there would be a fence around the garden. Did you mean that there would be a fence around the swale? No, um, only around the garden. Around the garden, okay. you know, on all side, all four sides of the garden will have um, fence around it. So once it, you cross the gate to get into the garden, you're in the garden. You're in the garden. Okay. Yeah. So where is this stockade fence going to be? Um, so I, I, this a, I didn't hear it uh, at, at the at the sidewalk. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. With the wind, it was pretty hard yeah, to communicate. Um, you got a map today. Yes. And that sure. map shows the location of the stockade fence. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> oh. This one doesn't matter. You see it, Paul? Um, it's it's parallel chain, to the police okay. station. Stockade on the other side of the um, police station. I'm thinking he's got a map that doesn't have it. Paul? Uh, it's on this. It's on this one, Paul. Yeah, it's on this. Oh, it's on that one. Yeah. Okay. So the stockade fence will run along here. Okay. And all the way over to this fence. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm just curious, if I may, yep. Mr. Chair. Um, I know in uh, Chief Towns' original letter, uh, looking at his third paragraph, uh, he raised some concerns about the walkway between the buildings and the access. Would you, and, and we have to support our, our law enforcement folks and our public servants who provide a valuable service to our town and volunteer their time and serve in harm's way. So that, that I, I take that to heart 
those, those words, would you guys be at all agreeable to the possibility for, for two reasons. One, that proposed walkway goes right by a memorial to our fallen firefighters. It goes right by a memorial to a fallen law enforcement agent um, that, that was here in Berwick. Um, and it's a high traffic area. It will be a high traffic area um, with the proposed foot traffic. Would you be agreeable to possibly just having the access from the other end and not using that footpath? Would that be a reasonable compromise? So, um, <coughs> if I may, um, is that walkway has always been proposed for the public walkway. If you look at the original plans, mm -hmm. is on the drafting of the plans, it shows that that being used as a public access to that property. Mm -hmm. And as far as going past the two memorials, I can't think of a better fitting, more fitting way of people to realize that those memorials are there because most people don't realize those memorials are there. Mm -hmm. So if people are walking by, they're more likely to see them and recognize that there's been a past sacrifice made. Oh, sorry, Tom, before you walk away, if I, if I may, I think, I think you know you, you hit exactly what I was thinking when you said that, that you know, has two memorials to two, two brave people that gave their lives in service of the public, and what a better way to memorialize them than people see them. I actually stopped and looked at those memorials when I walked by today to go to that garden. And, you know, I think one of the other things that I may be wrong, but I think that, you know, this is public property. So, you know, the public is, you know, if, if I decided to take my kids out in that field right now and have a picnic, I don't think anyone could stop me. Public property, so I think it's important to note that as well. I mean, we want to definitely respect the the police and the fire department and the operation of their business. Um, I, but I think you know, knowing that that is was actually always designed to be a public walkway, and it goes by those two memorials. I think makes that even more makes that make even more sense. And if I may, you know, talk about the the public walkway and stuff. Is that's all been part of our comprehensive plan and. Uh, our downtown vision is to make connecting walkways between all the different parcels that Berwick owns, the pieces down by the river, the pieces up by the library. And um, actually, as later on this year, I'm going to be looking at proposing another walkway on the other side of that property coming off the of Sullivan Street, looping around the wooded area up the Logan Street. So, Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. I'm just, I, I have one question. And, okay. and I'm, I know anything over a six foot fence is a grudge fence, according to. Is this fence going to be enough security for the police department and the fire department? Is um, it going to be okay? I mean, if I, if I may please. say two things. First of all, um, not all fences over six feet are considered a grudge fence, yeah. depends on the circumstance. circumstances. But anything over six feet requires a permit okay. because of engineering. So they could potentially do whatever height the community garden and the police department agrees upon. Um, <clears throat> just would matter as to whether or not I need the fencing company to give me engineering materials. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, Mr. Chair, and I, I apologize if I'm out of line, but perhaps, you know, Mr. Uh, uh, the Chief might want to. Mr. Chair, you might want to have the chief address some of these issues directly since he's here. Yep. Just so to ease the board members' concerns because I know there was some meeting. Yep. <laughs> You're not getting out of it, Chief. Sorry. <laughs> there, because there is there is one item in the letter from uh, from select board member Chase that was not something that was easily addressable and I think would be good on the record from the chief as far as the uh, noise and disturbances and whether or not the police department, um, I know I've, I've spoken with the fire department about it, but whether or not the police department feels there is any uh, concern for noise from a garden that would be disruptive to your business. From noise coming from the garden towards us? Yeah. Um, I don't have any issues with that whatsoever. Okay, thank you. Um, they might be a little irritated with we test our sirens when we do shift changes and things like that. So that's something that you'll have to be accustomed to. Um, of course, we use them when we come and go. Um, that should answer that question. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that all of your <coughs> concerns were addressed as well. I will speak really quickly on the walkway issue. Um, I understand what uh, Mr. Wright said that is has been defined as a walkway, 
but I think it should be upgraded to meet what is now going to be asked of it. Um, you're going to have people going back and forth between our two buildings, and you guys walk that today. It really isn't it is quite designed narrow. at this point. It is quite narrow. For rakes and shovels and wheelbarrows and things of that nature. My other concern, again, of that, that particular location where that walkway is, is just because of if you look at the way the, the, uh, my building is laid out, my cruisers feed out of that front door. So they're coming out of that front door into an area where we'll probably have increased foot traffic because of the community garden. So my concerns are safety-wise, um, safety-minded in that respect. So again, the walkway issue, if it's going to be a walkway and it's going to be used, it probably should be, in my mind, upgraded to meet the use that's going to be required of it. Um, and if I may, I didn't, I didn't really pay particular attention to, the, to that walkway. Is it too narrow? Is that you can Well, it actually is. Um, the walkway, it, it, one could almost call it like a, an apron on the fire department. It, mm -hmm. it, it goes up against the edge of the fire department and it comes out not a big distance. Yeah. Three feet, maybe? So it's not, it's not like an yeah. 88, no, five foot? No. And then no. it would have to be upgraded anyways, because if, if the garden is going to be an ADA compliant, it needs to have at least a five foot walkway. So, um, and so then I, w I would ask the question about concern for safety and people using that. I mean, I, I don't personally envision this being a massively trafficked uh, walkway. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. It could be, you know, a whole community of gardeners here that, you know, uh, you know, you, you all of a sudden you're <coughs> parking in that parking lot. But I, I mean, you know, if your offices are coming out getting into cruisers, is that what you're saying? If they park out front and they begin coming in. There's a drive-through garage right there. Right. The garage, the garage door um, like a sally port is, ve is very close. It goes really between the two monuments that's referred to. Um, mm -hmm. Our cruisers feed out of that front door. We go around the back and we come out the front, kind of like the Bat Cave, if you if you remember that. Uh -huh. um, so I'm just saying that 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 traffic there is probably one of the more um, safety-wise, one of the more sensitive areas, and. And you're asking people to do something on a walkway that isn't, at this time, really set up for what it's being asked of. So i just looking at, if we're going to have it there, let's make sure that the thing works yeah. as far as... Ag so yeah. as the walkway, like once it reaches, the, the walkway is a normal walkway up until the fire station. Yes. Once you get to the front door, like you said, it's just like it skirts around. Yes. And then it's just, it's paved, right? That's what it's it is. Paved. It's just a paved yes. walkway. Um, I think what they were saying is they're they're not going to really access it for wheelbarrow use and stuff like that. They're going to be using the top part to get all that stuff in. So they're not going to be act it's more or less just going to be pedestrians walking through that area. Um all the stuff would be inside of the fenced area. Um but I do hear the concern about finishing like widening out that area for better access. Um so, so you're saying because uh, I wasn't aware of this. So, so there's going to be an uh, an entrance on Logan Street. Yes. Yep. If you look at for, the top for construction for, and heavy yeah, for drop equipment. off right. for yeah. equipment or compost, <coughs> right? Chips. It's, it's not and, shown on here. No. Yeah. yeah. You just I see the hammerhead. I didn't right. see it, and I yeah, didn't hear it. So at the hammerhead area, Got they it. said there's right. a rolling gate, yeah. and that's where all their basically all their drop offs will be. Okay. Um, and that's also where most of the like the um, the people picking up produce would be coming up from the top and not from the bottom. Got it. All right. So that makes. And if if that is the case, would it be a reasonable ask? I, and I just again, in the interest of supporting our public servants, they they've brought up the point that you know officer safety and traffic and. Uh, policing issues. I, I, I am fully in support of the community garden, but from an officer safety standpoint, does it make sense to not have access via a walkway there for officer safety 
and have it all come in from the other end where the parking's at. If that is where, well, I mean, if that's where your vehicle traffic is coming in and all of your supplies are coming in, if why do you can drive safe and be aware of people walking? I mean, that's an everyday occurrence everywhere around here. I mean, I don't think that's a. But you have emergency vehicles coming yeah. out to and where you're And when people hear crossing. sirens and see lights, they pay attention to those. So, so <laughs> I would it, 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 sort of as a compromise between the, what I'm hearing. <clears throat> if the walkway is improved and becomes wide because people have double strollers, they may not have wheelbarrows, but they have strollers and things that they might come through there. The stockade fence that runs parallel to behind the police station, could that be extended to the new wide walkway, turn 90 degrees back towards your garage door and create a walled off area to keep people from your area? So ideally, yes, I would like to see that. Um, that was left out intentionally at this point only because we have to um, think of snow removal as well. Sure. Mm. It's a tight area and if you look, we're very close to the, what I would call a, a natural cistern for water. Yep. Mm -hmm. Collection, there's not a lot of space there um, and I need to be able to have that plowed Mm -hmm. So if I enclose it completely at this point, I lose a little bit of the ability to push some snow in that direction. Okay. And until, um, and that's why it was, it was intentionally left open okay. with the intent that after a season or two, a winter season or two, <clears throat> if I can make that work, I would prefer to have it completely closed off. Yes. Yeah. Chief, uh, could, just, for clar sorry, not <clears throat> just for clarity, can you show me on, the, on there where the police traffic goes and where that sally port is? I think I know, but I'm... You can just like you to you, highlight it. Yeah, you see the road and how it turns 90 right there. Yeah. Right there. So, I mean, no one should be walking behind around that that's area. Right. They should be going right that's, around. That's what I thought. Yeah. I just I was confused when we were talking yeah. about the sidewalk. It, and it's more or less coming, coming out. out of the Sally Port. Yeah. So they'd be going in through that. That's not the concern. The concern is them coming out. But, I mean. But when as, you're walking from the parking lot, yeah. in order to access that walkway, you have to walk right in front of that garage door where you have emergency vehicles coming out. Well, I, when I got there, I didn't walk I around I didn't that. Either. You didn't? No. I could be mistaken. I walked I right you... on the sidewalk and there was no... Well, the and that, that, was... that is the point that I was trying to get yeah. to is, yeah. do you have to cross that in front of that walk, that garage to no. get there? And we didn't, so... No. No. Okay. I could and, But I, I think, think I got on the sidewalk. Yeah. The sidewalk I came issue. from the parking lot over a, across the street, so I walked around and... Even Paul and I walked on the way yeah. back, and we didn't go anywhere near the Sally Port. Now, parking in that parking lot, which they will have six spots, it is possible to have someone walk through there. But, I mean, at the same time, I mean, how Being many Being a public people... place, people have the right to do that yeah. right. right now. They right. could park yeah. there and walk yeah. in front yeah. of the bay. And yeah. like you said, an emergency vehicle, a door goes up, a cop car comes out. Generally, you're going to get out of the way. Yeah. Um, I understand the concern completely, yep. but it, it, I, I like I like the idea of, of separating that spot between the walkway and the back garage door. Some mm -hmm. I understand your snow removal concern. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of compromise as to a delineation to keep people from just kind of heading down that way. Right. But maybe we can figure that out. I don't, sure. I don't think the entrance to the garage is the concern, right? It's you guys come out of there, you know, on an emergency call, say. Is that more the concern coming out of the garage? His concern is valid because essentially in approach to the garden, if they're using the walkway that we're referring to now, they still have the ability to walk towards where my cruises are going into that garage. So they'll be walking into basically onto our, our, our driveway. Yeah, I saw the need to separate it when I was there. Yeah. But but I mean, that, and I agree with you, it's just a matter of that snow removal aspect well, that I sure. can't predict at this yeah, point. But sure. as of right now, could someone walk around that area? Yes. Yes, they can, but there isn't a community garden there at this right, point. I, right, I know, but right. I mean... It, so, it, so, just being kind of devil's advocate, I've seen some videos where uh, people go on police lots with cameras. Hmm? And some police react one way, some police react right. another way. One of the... One of the things that I kind of picked up on, having watched a few of them, is that the, that area needs to be posted. Yes. That it's a restricted area? Yes. Is that posted as a restricted area? It is on the... Or is that something we can do to, so, you know, maybe some signs there? And then, and then you still have the ability to push the snow, but there's clear signs? Because I'm guessing people that are at the community garden aren't going to be, you know, mischievous and 
going in your parking lot if they know don't go there. Well, we wouldn't be putting the signs up for those people. We'd be putting them up for the ones that need to read have, the signs. Have nefarious intent. Yeah. Great. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I'm just looking for, you know, a compromise that yeah. meets everybody's mm -hmm. thing. I think, I think to me, some signage. Or Ideally, keeping people out of an area that you have a concern with prior to them getting there is the ideal solution. So, yes, the signage, if you look around the other side of the building, it's marked. And to be quite honest with you, the reason for the stockade fence is because during the um, preparation for the community garden, which I, I'm not opposed to the community garden, but we had foot traffic back and forth going past four signs saying limited access, no access. Um, and just I deal with human beings all the time. Sure. Human nature is if I can see that I only need to go right there <laughs> and I can go from point A to point B, and you're telling me I need to right. go to point A, point B, yeah, point C, point right. D. And having that stockade fence would definitely... Which is yeah. where we, we yep. came to an agreement, and, yep. and that would resolve that. Mm -hmm. And the, the one issue that you're referring is is that one open hole that yep. is still there. And again, I, I brought the concern to the town manager, and I'm not sure if he talked with Highway yet or not, but it was purely stopped at that point based on the snow, snow. removal issue. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you have no problem at it being six feet high? Fence. The fence, yeah. At six feet is adequate. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. <laughs> would you like it higher? It would probably help, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, the back section. Right. How high would you we like it? If, if you're going to speak, you got to speak in front of the microphone. It's just so the people that are listening. We, we have we have certain restrictions when it comes to juveniles. We keep, we're supposed to keep juveniles from sight and sound from adults, all adults. Mm -hmm. So if I have a juvenile in custody, which we do on occasion, um, we're supposed to keep these people protected. So what we've got now is we're bringing more activity into a, a place that didn't have any until this came along. So now the issue arises is what are we going to do when we have these juveniles? We're going to be essentially, in some respects, kind of parading them along in front of the community garden. So what is that the was the other reason for the stockade fence is to give the privacy between yeah. the two spaces. Well, yeah. What does right what? look like for you guys? Eight foot, ten foot? What what works? Yeah. I mean, eight foot would be optimal, um, but again. I, mean, I, I want to make it clear that I'm not here to oppose right, the community. Right. No, it's, it, right. I've been asked it's, it's to just tell your concerns, right. and we're, we're voicing right. them out. Right. So with the elevation, like I've noticed, like when I was walking out there at the site walk, I've noticed halfway through a six-foot fence, you won't see anything. If right. you're halfway in the garden, you're not going to see anything. If you're all the way at the top, you, you could possibly see people. You could. I, I mean, really it. Eight foot, and is an extra two feet going to make a difference? Well, I think that it would in the sense that to go all the way to the top, not only do you have the two extra feet, but now you're hundreds of yards from the sight line of being able to identify well, a juvenile versus an adult. I wouldn't say hundreds of yards, but hundreds feet. of feet. feet. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. <laughs> hundreds so of yards, it wouldn't would be, be an issue. We can, yeah. we can survive with six feet. Again, this is all new to us. We're, right. we're trying to picture what right. it's going to look like when it's finished. Mm -hmm. um, What's the proposed height right now of the stock? Six, six feet. Six feet. Yeah. So you're saying in the back of the building, eight feet would be yes. better. And then around, like the rest of it that goes around where you're, you're parking lot. So you're saying the first 101 feet, you'd want eight feet tall, and then the rest could be six feet around it? I would say if we're going to go with eight feet, let's go with eight feet. All the way around? Yeah. Just for appearance, <coughs> I think it's going to look yeah. I guess my personal opinion is that if that's a request from our police department and it's a doable thing, um, I'm in favor of eight feet for the entire fence. On your cop cars, do you have tinted windows? Yeah, we do. So, so my understanding of privacy to keep things private mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why you have tinted windows to some extent yes. and then you would be bringing them in a sally into, into the sally <coughs> for um, the not, most part not always with juveniles okay would you be going through the front of the police station nope. we use the side entrance um, closest to school street 
um, side entrance. So you're you're talking. So I'm talking this end of the building down here. This is actually the, the garage. Yeah. I'm talking about this end right here. Okay. <clears throat> so the chances of seeing something from this side from being over here. I mean, with this corner, it'd be very hard to see it. Again, I'm, I, I'm being I'm, asked I'm just trying to, to play devil's advocate. Things that this. I really can't. You're yeah. right. I mean, yeah. if people really want to see, yeah. if they really, really want to see, they're going right. to stand on right. a bucket and look over the fence. Right. And they um, have their right to do that. We're just doing what we can to make. Um, I can look people in the eye and say that we did what we could. Right. Right. Yeah. It's my thought is just being a. A free man or a free woman, you have we have the right to go onto a public pro property, mm -hmm. as long as it's not restricted access. Right. So at that point, anyone could walk around to those areas and watch kids being brought into the police station if they're in the in the parking lot. I mean, so to change something just because a garden's going in there when anyone has that access at any point. Like, if I wanted to walk around the fire station, I could walk around the fire station. I mean, we all have that right to do that. I just, me personally, I think that that would be a little bit of a tall stretch. But that's just me. I mean, if... The, well, well I, I, the issue is, is we've changed use. You're now inviting right, people to right, the space. But You're the creating privacy space. isn't on the people. The privacy would be more towards the police creating more privacy for that. It's an yes, officer, for, it's an officer safety yes, issue. For what we, for what we do for officers. business, sometimes privacy is very, very important. Right. But Some people do not like to talk to us yes. when everyone else can see right. that. And that also being a double-edged sword, that bringing more people to the fire, fire and police station would be welcoming people to visit, right? I like visitors, but yeah. you're... Some of the people that we, uh, we, we need to talk to mm -hmm. are not comfortable being seen talking to the police. Right. They do not want that to happen. I can also tell you that by nature, a lot of them smoke. Yeah. So I find myself outside of the building, <clears throat> which now we really have had no issue with because there's been no traffic out there. Occasionally, we'd see a person walk by. Right. We've now cha we're changing the use so you're... Having something there that's soliciting people to come use it, which is a good thing. Yes. I'm trying to say, in order for me to continue to do business safely and to keep all those things in mind, that's where this fence comes up. How am I going to prohibit people from walking through places that they really can't be? Right. And how am I going to pr um, protect the people that I need to protect? And a fence came as yeah, the, fence, the easiest solution. Good. I agree with that fence. The stockade yeah. fence is good. Yeah, I, think, I, I think, Mike, if I can add, <laughs> too, you know, this is, this is a situation where both components here are, are our community, mm -hmm. right? So it's not like, you know, you have a, a neighbor who's being difficult and wants to, I mean, you know, this is our law enforcement, right? This is, you know, the people we call when we need help, right? So, mm -hmm. I, and, and I think being a community garden, I think that, you know, whatever. I don't know. I'm 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 always kind of yielding to you know within reason. I mean, if they want an eight foot fence versus a six foot fence. If that makes them feel more comfortable, I don't think that's a huge. It's a reasonable accommodation. Ask. It's going to be funded out of the same tax dollars that we would have funded the six foot fence. So, personally, I think that kind of we can almost get into a, you know, like oppositional uh, stance here. But I don't think that's really what we want, right? We want to be, we're, we're all part of the community here. The, the fence issue came up late in the game. Um, the way this unfolded, uh, from my perspective, wasn't ideal. And I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just right. saying it wasn't ideal. Mm -hmm. So discussions that we should have had months ago have just taken place. So when we talked the other day, six-foot fence comes up because I'm looking at a section of six-foot fence that we currently have. But when you walk the property and you're standing up there and you realize, I'm, I'm six feet tall, I can see everything, right. regardless of a six-foot fence, I can still see everything. Mm -hmm. um, you may have had the proposal come to you with an eight-foot fence on it. We wouldn't be having this discussion. It just came down to timing. Right. Um, so the difference between you seeing a six identified there and us saying eight tonight is really because this fence thing is new, correct? 
Yeah, that was a compromise that you guys yes. made. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think that we'll likely see a motion to... Uh, I'm going to be making a motion to ask for the fence to be raised to eight feet. I would also ask this question, not necessarily first, but in addition to, um, has there been an answer from the people who plow that corner? What is acceptable in terms of where the fence starts and stops and getting the snow removal taken care of? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's definitely isn't a public works, right? James Alismo, town manager. I talked with Jody, director of public works. Um, obviously, if there's a major snow event, it's going to add additional, you know, inconvenience that it might have to get snow blowed out. But overall, with the there's built-in snow storage on the plan, said so that they, they can mm -hmm. they can make it work. But it, we didn't get in we, as proposed. We didn't get into detail with it. Taking the ninety. Yeah. I, I think that needs attention. I think that that. Well, does the snow just get pushed into that swale right there? Um, so, uh, built into both the. Um, if you look at the plan, there's there's space built in for snow storage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So along the yeah. asphalt area, there's a twenty foot. Um, gap between where the stockade fence is and the asphalt. So I think that should be adequate. You know, normal circumstances, they'll be able to, to, to manage it. And then anything else, they'll just have to, you, you know, no. like I said, Did snow blow or remove it. Oh, okay. But, but in, also, would, would we consider a vegetative uh, barrier uh, along the walkway? It's probably you know, right like it, it screens that area and it provides, you know, thou shall walk this way. <laughs> And keeps people from meandering off that path. I, I don't know if that's something. I think any. I'm not sure about like the, the exacts, but I think any visual cues and barriers. And I think over time, signage will be implemented just to mm -hmm. make it work. So. I don't. I don't know if this is a feasible thing or not, but I just kind of had an idea about either having a gate on that fence or a removable <clears throat> section of fence, so that in the winter time this section of fence can be taken away when the garden's not being used and, and then you still got a straight shot pushing the pushing the snow. Well, yeah, because then there's still that buffer in between the stockade fence and the food forest. Yeah, I mean, that could be possible. Could, that doesn't seem like it'd be that hard. We could do like a series of bollards that are chained and that, that are removable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when it comes to compromising on this stuff, it's not like we we can recommend to the developers. We would ask them would they be willing to accept that they would want to put a six-foot fence. It's not like we say you have to have an eight-foot fence or a six-foot fence. It's are you amendable to putting in an eight-foot fence. Or you can make it a condition of approval, can you not? Um, that I guess that would be a Hannah question. I mean, we do conditions of <laughs> approval all the time. Well, you said we have to have a permit, excuse me, to make a higher than six foot, correct? Something, yes. So the anything over six feet tall by state code requirements requires uh, engineering. So I would, they would have to have a permit. And um, just so you guys are aware, I realize that yes, it's all going to come out of the same funds. But I don't know if any of you all have seen the price of fencing lately, and that two feet really makes a huge it's financial it's impact. So, um, yeah, you know, just just so you're aware, mm -hmm. as we're thinking about this, because it is all our. All of the all of the parties involved. This is a very unique and pleasantly unique situation because literally every party involved on all sides of this are all ours, mm -hmm. and everybody. We want to make every single person happy for different reasons, but all related to the community. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we could work together to figure out whether it's six feet or eight feet. That when we're we can consult with the fence fence company and really take a look at it to come up with a plan that works. And I think in some areas the topography is different. It go, the one fence goes up a hill, but ultimately we want the fence to to work. But I don't. I mean, whether it, I don't think we need to get hung up on whether it needs to be six feet or 
eight feet. Ulti ultimately, we can make it make it work. Yeah, or like what? Um, so Jerry just said, "What if we basically lift it up a six foot fence two feet, so it'd be open on at the bottom, and then it would just have that." It's it is, but it would be open at the bottom. So then, for snow removal and stuff like that, it would I, still. I don't know if that fire. changes the engineering need. No, it's not. And change two, I you know, I, I was just thinking about the whole thing about the fence and about having a gate or a removable thing, mm. because you know every place I've ever seen that has a fence around it gets d damaged or destroyed mm -hmm. every winter. Yep. So, you know, <laughs> getting rid of that snow is an important, mm -hmm. important factor to consider with that. Well, there's also enough room, so it's 20 feet in between the road and the fence, and then it looks like there's probably roughly almost 20 feet in between the fence and the, the other fence for the garden. So, I mean, what's to say that they just try and move it another 5 or 10 feet? Because the closer the fence, stockade fence is, t the only the only thing is at some point the the bottom part of the food forest might be shaded. I mean that would that would also be a concern, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just gonna you know talk about the the uh, the fence and the snow removal. As you're talking about the the area on the back side of the police driveway where it turns the corner. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking whether to put a, a fence there or a removable fence there. Um, at that point, the fence was more to corral people from going across there. Mm -hmm. As, you know, as James pointed out earlier, um, we can do a lot of that pedestrian traffic control with bollards and chains and not a solid fence. Mm -hmm. So there is no need for a fence on that end, you know, <clears throat> anyways. So. Right. Is um, you know so that way that would eliminate that. Um, <clears throat> the only other thing I'd, I was going to say is, is about the uh, you know the the fence is going from the six foot fence to the eight foot fence does add quite a bit of cost mm -hmm. to it. Not only in the fencing cost but in the engineering cost. Mm -hmm. um, and is um, as you just mentioned that is maybe moving that fence up the hill closer to the community garden would effectively raise the height, you know, that extra two feet, so that we wouldn't need that eight-foot fence through there. Right. So, Plus giving you more room for snow storage. Yeah. So, Hannah, what's your thought on conditioning fence height? Well, hmm. I would say technically you can put a specific height, although I would caution that partially just because there's been a lot of discussion on it, but also because it is still a relatively new decision. Um, and kind of as James was saying, I think the best way forward is to leave the condition as, you know, fencing as amenable to, you know, all parties involved, something like that, so that there's a clear need for, um, what's the word, a decision between everyone, um, rather than specifically specifying so, the height. Now. So if we just said adequate fencing is provided in the areas shown. That's would... satisfactory to the police department and the applicant or the garden. Okay. Okay. It doesn't you have to leave a decision to be made. Yeah, but not by us. Okay. And that and that is well, something that's ambiguous either. That's you know, let's not leave it too open ended. Yeah, that's well, well, that's my I concern. mean it's either a six or an eight foot <laughs> fence. It has to be there regardless. Well anyway. I would I would offer this as a compromise. If we're if we're stuck on it. I mean if it's all taxpayer money, I mean it maybe it should go to a vote. I mean, why are we the ones that and say that thing's going to be delayed two years? So, <laughs> but I, I, the, I think the, I, mean, I think the reality that this is a very simple solution is it, it, let's get a, an eight foot stake and a six foot stake. Let's go drive them in the ground at the proposed level we're talking about. If we're going to go up that hill, and let's get a visual look at it. And if if a six foot fence moved a few feet back, a few feet up the hill is going to provide adequate adequate screening, and the police are in agreement. 
then then we move forward. And if it doesn't, then then we condition it for an eight foot fence, and we can put it to bed. I don't know. It, it's a hundred and sixty <clears throat> something feet long, at two feet tall. I mean, that's that's a significant. Yes. significant cost of, of infrastructure for that. Yes. So, Chief, can I ask you a question, please? Sure. Hold on. I, I, my question would be, how important is an eight-foot fence after the conversation that we've had, knowing that, you know, it's a significant additional cost to the taxpayers, how important really is it to have an eight-foot fence versus a six-foot fence? Willing to work with anybody. This used to be the police department. So if you think mm. of what we're willing to work with, um, we talked about a six-foot fence because of where Dennis and I were looking at the way the grade came down. Um, we had put the fence at the bottom of the grade. I guess if you move it up two feet, it's going to theoretically raise the height of the fence. So, I mean, a six-foot fence might be adequate it's just the positioning of it. Okay. If you say that I only have a six foot fence, then I only have a six foot fence. You're not going to see me. Well, you know, I'm asking because I want, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, I want to do what you guys need um, without, you know, killing the project or without, you know, really, you know, breaking the budget. Um, can, can, would you be okay if we, made a motion like we would approve the six-foot fence and location to be determined? Would that be more, you know, then you guys could adjust it or we could do the stake thing and... Um, uh, that's your decision, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I, well, I'm just trying to get your, your take on it, you know. <laughs> I mean, looking at what you just said, that leaves speculation as to that fence could now come closer to the police department and I'm losing snow storage space. If you leave that where it's going to be up to... Well, hold on, Irish. Can I interject? Yes. Is this, if, if the police chief and the community garden people are comfortable with this, and, and I ask you all to, to pay attention to this. Would you all be comfortable with the board conditioning a fence of height and location to be agreed upon prior to installation with confirmation to the code office? So you two work out the height, do the stake thing, and then before a fence gets put in, you guys provide me with something signed by all of you that you've examined this, done the stake test, and this is what you're going to do for a height or location? Is that something that would be kind of a compromise? Yeah. Right. Would you I, guys be amenable to that? It would have to be, it would be contingent upon the parties being amenable because if right. they do Because that way, if fence, you guys wanted it closer to the garden, it could happen. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's, a, you know, as, as long as everyone's okay with that. And then it just goes through Irish. Right. And that would Mr. prevent, that would prevent the risk <clears throat> of it being moved closer to your department. But it would I, have I'm to be amenable to... I'm not concerned about that. It's just no, if I we know. leave it up to... I mean, let's make let's a decision. Let's not leave it open-ended. I, I understand let's what you're saying. But for a six-foot fence, yeah. because a permit's not required, it would be up to the applicant to be amenable to reporting to me prior to installing a six-foot fence because I don't permit those that are mm -hmm. required. Is that I something just think that... that I, I think, in my opinion, I'm going to mm -hmm. say... I, I feel like that that would be poor form on our part because as public servants, how hard are they going to push back against... You know the town they're, they're gonna and, and you've been very agreeable you've, you've told us what your needs are he's expressed his needs I, I think if we can meet his needs we should and I think a good compromise would look like we go down there on an afternoon we drive in a six-foot stake and we drive in an eight-foot stake and we set it at the proposed area and we a representative from the community garden a representative from the police department and and a few representatives from us say yeah that's what right looks like and that's the condition uh, it's, it's i have a, I, I think that's a too too tall of a ask because if it was any other situation if it was at a residency we would just condition it and we'd make them eat the mm -hmm. cost we would just say put up a fence and we don't the only times that like we've had issues is let's say a pickleball court comes in and someone wants sound deadening mm -hmm. That's the compromise that we've had. They haven't, we haven't asked, anyone has, uh, no one has asked for a taller fence. Actually, we, one of our select board members asked for a fence to an adjoining property yep. that adjoined his. So and it's, they, it's, it's and they, an unreasonable comp ask. they compromised the, the, the planning board didn't do anything for that. They compromised with the contractors. 
that was not us saying you have to put a fence in. They agreed outside of the planning board meeting to what was okay and what wasn't. I mean, right. Do we know if a fence my, my company has been consulted? I'm sorry, Les, on this <coughs> fence. Have we, has a fence company been consulted? Or yeah, yes. Okay. Thank uh, you. We have a estimate on a six foot fence, 332 feet long, with a four foot removable gate of our choice somewhere along that more of a uh, fire escape type issue. Chief, did they express whether they thought that would give you ample privacy for what you were looking for? This was really quickly. This happened between Tuesday and this evening. Mm -hmm. um, it's the company that we use, uh, the fencing that currently is at the police department. Um, they did send us an estimate. So they, they gave us what we asked for, and at the time it was six-foot fence. Again, so I, I, and another piece of this, not to interrupt, sure. but, you know, this is a very short-fused response on them because we've put them in an awkward spot where they were not privy to the plans from the get-go, and now they're having to scramble, and, and we're kind of putting them in the hot seat, right? I mean, the they fence issue has only come up. up. When did the fence issue come they, up? Like this they week? Were, they were notified with the fire department and everybody else. Terry notifies everybody. Okay. Everybody gets the packet at the beginning. The fence issue was brought up recently. I'm not sure why that was brought up recently, but the packet went out to everybody. They got it at the same time you guys did. Mm -hmm. So it's and that seemed what the compromise was yes. is to put up a stockade fence to yes. to have some I, I don't, privacy. Just, just uh, to respond to what you said, I, I, the idea of putting a six foot stake and an eight foot stake and us making a decision on that, I think, is beyond our scope. I would not. I be, would agree with that. I would not be involved with that. I, I will go on record saying I have expressed my concerns from mm -hmm. the very first time that I heard about this. Yep. Um, so don't misunderstand that this has this just didn't pop up in the last week. I've been expressing right. my right. concerns yep. from the very in your, beginning. In your letter, yeah, we're just you. now getting to them <laughs> being addressed. Yep. Uh, and so, if I, I may, I that, Chief. I was just stating that you weren't unaware of the project until Monday. No, I was aware yeah. the first day that so I was notified. I was just that making so, making sure. that clear mm -hmm. that to yep. the board that you guys get notified the same as they do at the beginning. So. Going back to uh, the chief's original comment at the beginning of, of his words, uh, he was asked, would you prefer a six or eight foot fence? And he said an eight foot fence is optimal, mm -hmm. meaning what he really would like. So, uh, so I, I'm kind of comfortable giving him what he wants. Mm -hmm. I would be there as well. See, I'm on the other side of the fence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. I, I just think of it as a, cost, I, as a cost thing. I mean, it's co it costs taxpayer money to put this fence up. I mean, my question is, is it, is it in our purview to even make that stipulation? The height? Yeah, no. Yeah. Is that, is that in our, our ability to even stipulate a six or an eight foot fence? Is that a question for me? Yes. <laughs> oh, um, it is in your ability to impose conditions that you deem necessary, but the question then comes down to whether or not you can tie it to a specific need. And in this case, the need is the safety concerns that were expressed by the chief. Um, but is there a tangible reason as to why eight is better than six? I don't know. Um, is there potentially the compromise with moving it up the hill and then still using a six foot fence and saving thousands of dollars or however much the fence costs? Maybe. Um, so I guess the question is, yes, you can, but is it justifiable? Does that answer the question? I, I am. No, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I am stuck squarely in I would love the height to be at the eight foot point but I'm okay with the six foot fence two feet up the hill creating the eight foot point yeah. to save money right or if that could if, be somehow kind of put or what in, if the ground swaled you know so it has a berm and then it's six feet yeah you know, it's, yeah. it's still I'm, doing the same right. thing. I'm not hung up on it has to be eight feet of wood fence. Right. I'm, hu I'm hung up on I want that level of privacy. Of privacy. Yes. And I, I agree, Rick. I think I think that's that's where we're coming out here is 
eight feet is better than six feet for the issues that the chief stated. So therefore, uh, how we get there is really not us, but it's, it's you know, uh, it needs to be worked out to their satisfaction. So we would ask them if they're amenable to looking at moving their fence back to achieve the eight foot sure. elevation. Yeah. I, I think that's a reasonable uh, stipulation to say, you know, make every, every, I mean, I, you know, I know these people uh, personally, and I know that, you know, they're uh, honest, honorable people. And I think if we said to them, make every possible effort to move this up the hill as far as you can without blocking the sunlight to the food garden to get that fence as high as possible, I think that's a, a healthy compromise. I mean, it's going to require Dennis to go move like 30 stakes two feet up the hill. <laughs> he enjoys now, Dennis, Dennis, in, with 60. that. Yeah. I'd like to speak to the idea of moving the fence. Absolutely. So um, the fence parallel to the... About this fence right here, parallel. Correct. Yes. You got to speak in the okay. mic. They're gonna, they're gonna yell at us. You can pick us. it up if you yeah. like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can take it with we you. We know which one you're talking about. Okay. So that stockade fence that parallels the driveway. Yep. Um. I don't think there's two feet of elevation gain between that fence and the fence of the garden. Okay. So you'd have to move it up inside the garden, and Before that's not going to work. Right. Okay, um, so a, a thought that occurs to me is that keep it in its present position and bring in fill mm -hmm. and lift it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like berm it or put a berm yeah. underneath it and yeah. lift it up. Yeah. Okay. Case close. I mean, that would cost significantly less than adding another two feet by. What would you say? Three hundred feet long. It's estimate for three hundred. if you guys speak, you guys speak in front of the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just preventing getting yelled at. <laughs> We're looking to get microphones out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say no, 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 too that, that that we'll be <laughs> taking, they'll be taking, um, soil out to make the new, um, the new poli the. Uh, Parking, parking lot. Storage. Thank you. That's right. the word. So that the parking lot, which down. could be used Phil to make the burn. Yeah. 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 yeah so, three hundred thirty-two <coughs> feet of six-foot fence came in at fourteen thousand six hundred five dollars. An additional five hundred fifty dollars if we wanted the four-foot gate. Okay. So, so you're at fifteen thousand. Correct. Yeah. Fifteen one. Oh five. That's at six feet. That's at six feet. Yeah. I'll get you a copy of this. Do I just get a plan? So uh, let me just ask the uh, so the the overall plan. Like I noticed that that site is uh, has a good slope to it, and I know that at the top you talked about making a cut there to make a level area. Is that gonna is that gonna be like terraced or is it gonna be a lot of it leveled out? Or no, just that it's. Area? Mostly just that one corner um, to be able to, one, lower that, that corner so it's not up above the rest of the garden, and also to allow uh, a, a space to move material around that corner to where we'll store the wood chips and the compost. Okay. Okay? Um, and there, you know... Um, but going back to the, um, the where the, the Sally driveway turns and goes into the garage and, the, and between people from coming off that walkway, um, it, you know, the, the idea of the, the chain thing, that's one approach. And I think Phil brought up um, the idea of a vegetative thing. And if we do that, Back close to the driveway, the vegetative approach won't impact snow removal because it's what twenty feet or more, mm. you know. So that's another solution to to that moving, you know. And that that walkway is five feet right now. It's five feet wide. It's right five now. feet okay. wide right okay. now. So it's adequate for um, people with mobility issues right now. Um, all garden equipment will already be in the garden. Wheelbarrows and everything. Um, our plan is to provide 
those big pieces of equipment to everybody. They don't need to bring things. They don't need to even bring shovels. They'll have shovels and rakes on site. All they have to do is come with their, their gardening gloves and their lunch and some water or whatever they want, you know? It's not um, a bunch of equipment coming in with them. Okay. I like the idea of the berm okay. lifting a six-foot yeah. section of fence. I mean, I mean, even if it only lifted it a foot, and we ended up with a seven-foot fence, I think that, you know, that, that it's closer number. to what is optimal. Yeah. What's that? Not another number we got to fight about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven, now seven feet. As well. well, I think I think I would be I would be you know amenable. Right? I mean I would be okay. Right. With it, just would be it, it would have to be basically be swaled so the water runoff would still be going to it's where the water needs to go. So so I that mean, could easily be addressed. Right. You know that's right. that's a, like you know put a pipe down let the water run through. You know, right. And then know, just divert a, it into not the, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you guys would be amendable to adding that berm? Sure. Okay. All right. It's kind of cool we haven't talked about the garden at all. <laughs> <laughs> Garden's great. All right. All right. So are we looking for a motion? Yes. I will make a motion that we find the application complete. No? We approve uh, it. Approve the application with the condition that the uh, fence is amended with a berm uh, for the eight foot visual okay. height. And are you also amenable to the uh, vegetative barrier along the walkway as discussed as a condition, sir? Uh, yes, so, um, you know, do, do you have any guidance on what you want to see? You're the vegetative? plant guy. You're the plant okay. guy. <laughs> uh, I was thinking Just more not something like... that's invasive and going to create okay. all kinds of issues. Something that <laughs> so, would obstruct people from just turning and walking. Crown so, of thorns. Crown of thorns. <laughs> you, okay. a, a hedge. A hedge would be think, fine. Think a hedge. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Crown of, crown of thorns. So I, I would make a motion that we approve the project with the understanding that uh, we will come up with an eight-foot fence solution and a vegetative barrier between the walkway and the police department. Can I just ask for a clarification? Is yes. that an eight, a, a berm for the entire length of the whole entire fence? Uh, we, my understanding, it was for the 101-foot section mm -hmm. parallel directly, yeah. to directly the behind the fence That's what we're talking about yes. then? Yeah, okay, right. thank you. Yeah, thank you yeah. for that clarification. Are we clear on that now? I'll second the motion. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Let it grow. All right. We beat the hell out of that one. Sorry. <laughs> hey, we got there. 20 minute recess. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just going to All right. <laughs> We'll be right, be right back. We're running over to our corner post to give us all something. <laughs> All right, so moving on is the land use ordinance amendments. So. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Yes, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, quick question for Terry, possibly Irish. The top from Lisa Chase, is that about the spot with the, right after it, about the signs? No, those are two separate things. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what, it just says the purpose of this ordinance suggestion would be to regulate and control the placement of signs. That's um, the content of her email. Yeah, this I just cut and pasted onto oh, a single okay. sheet. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's well, all. Well, what's this, this? What's the suggestion? 
That's to regulate and control the placement of signs placement. on utility poles within the town. I believe she's referring to things like, uh, you know, plowing calls, 775. Yeah, garage sale signs. Sorry, 8675309, right? That's the well, I mean, anyone yeah. can put on an easement, anyone can put signs anywhere. I mean, that's... Fun fact, technically it's illegal to attach anything to a telephone pole. Utility, to a utility right. pole, but yeah. a freestanding sign, I think. Right, but I'm just saying as for but this easements, is for let's, say, let's say you, on your on your lawn right next to the road, you could say vote for this. Yeah. Well, some towns have ordinances uh, that address that, but she's only uh, addressing utility, utility poles, poles. Anyway, in her. So around town, I, and I, I've seen the problem. Right. I've oh, seen the sales, solar... Yeah. Signs oh, okay. and the right. tree oh, guys yeah. and the whatever it is, or they and they sometimes the yard sale signs yep. stay there long after. Yep. and yeah. somebody will break half the sign off and it still stays there. It looks like, yeah, heck. like they got a telephone pole for sale because it just says yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish there were nothing on the telephone poles except wires. Did you say it was illegal to put anything on the utility? Technically, CMP no. says no. Yes, mm -hmm. they said nothing on their poles. Okay. okay. Technically, mm -hmm. it's illegal. Mm -hmm. So I could, if authorized by certain town managers in the room, CMP? go around and just rip all of them off and throw them in the dumpsters. Or fine them. Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, that's just... It, so technically, I cannot find people. I fee them. Right. Yes. And but I could provide so them with... How she says it is, there? this would prohibit the business signs on utility poles within so our So like town. the tree guys or the solar companies or those so types of things. But, I think but then you're you saying it's okay for yard sales and others... I'm uh, telling you straight up, it's CMP illegal to put anything on no there. Oh. Right. So that's already a law. So is that what you're so saying? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we don't need an ordinance. We just need enforcement. Yeah. Like <laughs> code enforcement. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I got nothing to do these days. I should just jump <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Well, that's when you just call the police and have them tear down. Have the police yeah, technically it's yeah. illegal. Yeah. Right. Not against code. Right, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> 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 All right. So, yes, I can start ripping them down if you'd like. And I will do the service of calling the companies that put them up and giving them the option to get their signs back. But if you need help ripping them down, let me know. All right, I'm going to call you on that because I will tell you in one of the grow, municipalities right? I worked for, Just have they that. had uh, my <laughs> old boss, one of the municipalities, he used to, get, he used to love rolling around and ripping them signs off, and uh, he was duking it out with one guy who owned his own little like yard cleaning company. And the dude must have had a cherry picker because the last sign none of us could get to. It was like 20 feet up the pole. I got a phone call about it. It wasn't even like a point. I don't even know what the point was because you never noticed it there. So, so moving forwards on to what Les is reading um, from Code Enforcement Officer <coughs> Office. <coughs> To bring the LUO in line with the with the approval we just received from the town attorney, I propose that we add the following under 7.13.F4. Off-premise signs shall be restricted to main DOT official business directional signs and must comply with all MDOT official business directional sign rules and regulations. Okay. I just have one stipulation on that. Which is? Farms. What about them? Seasonal times, farms put out corn signs or other things, this and they is have not to the same. Okay, all this right. This is that's, not that. that. What this pertains sure. to Those is little. Yeah, you like know the, the Dick's Fix It. Mm -hmm. Dick's Fix It yeah. shop has one. The, yes. the DOT has yeah, these signs. Cranberry Meadow Road. We ran into an issue because a a home occupancy here in town wanted to have a directional sign because his business is suffering because of his location. He wanted the directional signs off the main routes. We do not regulate that. That's through Maine DOT. However, okay. our ordinance did not allow for that. Uh, our current sign ordinance? Our current sign ordinance does not allow for that, clearly okay. allow mm. for that. So we did receive uh, some guidance from the town attorney that we could technically on a, um, well, this part of it's gray enough, we can do that thing. But yeah, we don't so want to be doing it on a, we can do that on a gray area thing when it's as simple as just plopping this in there and saying okay. that, that okay. they can legally have the assignment. Yeah, they just but have to also, go through MDOT to do they that. They have to go through yes. MDOT. It There's an application a, process. They have to fill out the application. I have to sign it before DOT will even consider it. Then okay. they order the sign. 
through DOT's specific authorized vendors mm -hmm. with their specific authorized criteria. They also have to renew them every year because the DOT does remove signs if they're not maintaining the, the fees for them. That's how they keep us from having 700 small business signs. We're just trying to make it so that our, our um, home occupancies that are needing to have people directed to them have a, a fighting it. chance here right. in town. Yeah. So, seems like a no brainer. Well, all businesses, right? Yeah, yeah. but this is for. The well, that I understand what yeah. the impetus was. Oh, this boy. is under okay. home business. Home Please, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, go for it, James. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to emphasize, like for like farms for off-premise signs, we probably should specifically enumerate that in our ordinance. Yes. Along with a whole host of things that like mm -hmm. to be more agriculturally friendly. Yes. So that's there's a, a farm study done by Patrick Carter from Maine Farmland Trust. There's a big effort in town for open space preservation and farmland yes. preservation. There's actually a, um, a committee, open space planning group, and comprehensive planning. It's all kind of meshing together. And um, the, the farmland report has a bunch of suggestions. So th that'd be in line with one of those. So okay. Something to probably. Uh, yeah. My, mm -hmm. my thought was I just wouldn't want to restrict someone to ha that has like a temporary farm stand to say, hey, we're over here. No. Yeah, no, 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 okay. no, no. I don't want to do that either because, quite frankly, that farm fresh corn just hits mm -hmm. home, you know. Mm -hmm. This is just so our, our home businesses, because our our actual signage for commercial businesses allows for a whole lot more. A home occupancy, and most home occupancies, they're not having a lot of foot traffic, but some of these places are harder to find, and we want to give them a fair chance. Okay. All right, so with the next part, Dan and Karen Crusoe, looks like they, they're they asking about um, industrial building, large-scale <coughs> businesses for moving into residentially zoned areas. So a large-scale business can't go in a residential area unless it's in the RCI zone, and that's residential, commercial, industrial zone. That would have to be a rezoning issue. I don't think that that would really be, um, I mean, we would need more information on just that. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and I am staring at the person who can tell me if I'm mistaken, the uh, complaint from this in regards to one particular business that is technically a home occupancy that is um, basically operated out of a residential area. The trucks are stored there for, uh, but they're they're used off site, but they're stored local, I believe. Is that the, get back up to the microphone. Yeah, that's, bring it back that's to the accurate. Area. So it's off, um, you know, it's off one of the, not major corridors, but pretty close to one of the, oh, that's off Old Stanford Road, I'll just be specific. Yeah. Um, and it's just something I went through code a couple of years ago that we have nothing against that would be specifically against it so yeah they it's their business they store them at their home uh they don't operate out of there obviously but it's the kind of their starting base and it's disruptive toward the towards the to the neighbors they I mean, live directly across from it so they have the equipment that starts up and then they go about their day that predates me so I had to get the historical. So from James. I'm just I trying to think at that point. So you would want to limit machinery at a residential area. I mean, is that essentially what they're trying to say? Does I mean, that seem like an adequate representation. Do we have of what the letter? Family is looking for. Yeah. We yeah, don't. She references a letter, but it, there's no letter. Yeah, I don't, the letter went no to letter. the select yeah. board a few years back. I can probably, right. uh, I probably have those emails in my email just so you have the whole context yeah, of right. it because it would be a but good I mean, case study. If it's a home it. occupancy, I mean, as long as they don't have more than, what, one employee or no employees? It's I'm not sure what the actual deal with that one is, but it appears to be, from what I understand from my conversations with James, just basically home base. They just start there and leave. Right. I think if, if uh, and I can locate that letter, the original letter, um, I believe that they're unhappy with the expansion since they moved in. Like it's like a lot of things. It's just mm -hmm. naturally well, I mean, over time. Yeah. Right. It happens. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. 
Jerry, you have a question for me? Thinking I, I guess I, so. Uh, Jerry's trying to ask me a question. That's right. Okay. Sorry, no, let's go ahead. You, you said something about one employee. Well, in, no, a home, uh, in a home occupancy, it's limited to how many employees you can have at your residence, right? If, if you're operating there. Right. Well, that, a home oc, you are operating at your house. Well, yeah, so, so I'm just, for clarity, because, I, you know, I own a roofing company and a yeah. construction company. I don't run it out of my home just because I don't want those people at my house. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but, nice. But if you did, you would be limited to how many employees you can have. I don't think so. Oh, yes. yes. It's in the ordinance. For, for, so for, for, a, for a home occupation. Yeah. It's, for but a home. it's different. It's, I think it's different like when, um, you know, somebody came before us and they said, we have, he operates in his home. He's operating. You're, you're thinking the difference right. between in the home with what Brian's trailer was doing versus out of the home, which is what this that's a different is license. Doing. Different though. license, right? That's and they're talking about if I I think I know who they're talking about. They don't operate out of it. Like so it's not a home arc. It's just that's like what James says. The equipment there, they go off and do jobs someplace else. Okay. So. I could agree with that because if it's a residential area, you shouldn't be having commercial stuff at a, unless it's your place of business. Yes, sir. Our ordinance says, and I think this is probably where this is coming from, nothing before 7. I'm sure this is all going on before 7. Uh, no, the and report was uh, uh, the, just the number of them. It wasn't about the time. Just about just the, the volume. volume. The time of the day is 7 o'clock. I'd like to see the letter. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, we'll, oh, we'll, just, we'll, we'll move on. This. We'll yeah. revisit with the letter. How's yeah. yeah I, and I, put, I wrote myself a note to, to find that original okay. letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So moving on for campgrounds and tenting grounds. Um, I've read through this. The one It's thing. only number five that was the change. It's the light one. Yes. Yes. Uh, it was, they're not in color. It was in color when I wrote it. But yeah. I read it through the email, and I saw the... Um, there's one thing. So there's. five and six is also six is also new. I yeah, believe. five and six mm -hmm. are the new the new items in, that I'd like to see first, added. In the first, in 8.1? Uh, yeah, 8.1. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. would be 8.1, point A, point five, five and, and point six. six. Okay, so I have, this is a, about number two. Campsites shall be laid out and screened in such a manner that none are within view from public roads, navigable rivers, existing residences, or approved subdivision lots. Any combination of evergreen planting, landscaped, earthen berms, or solid fencing may be used to achieve the screening standard. My thought is navigable rivers. <laughs> Most campsites, especially in central northern Maine, you can see tenting areas and you can tent <coughs> right on the river. On the river. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't write I know, that I know, but we're at a point I, where we can change you. this. I'm with you on that. 100%. I almost think we should strike that out. I would. Yeah. I would the whole number agree two? With no, 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 just no, the navigable the river piece. Just the na okay. I think having... I agree. Having that ability to be able to tent next to a river, Isn't even if someone sees you while they're canoeing, should be okay. When they say navigable, are they talking about a major? No, they're talking about Well, just well, like if you're canoeing. Any. You can yeah. Canoe okay. Or, yeah, okay. or a boat. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. Okay. So we so are. Strike at, navigable rivers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Me too. Um, other than that, I had no issues. Yep. I can eat lobster on a navigable river. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're striking that whole paragraph? No, no, no just, just the navigable, navigable two river piece. Piece. Navigable yeah. crazy. Yep, that's it. Right. So five and six are what we So basically, you're okay. still making it screened yeah. from the road, yeah. from yeah. the yeah. neighbors. No. Just not from the river. Just not yeah. from a river. That makes sense to yeah. me, but I wasn't, that wasn't the Well, I, I the also think I about it, let's say, like, the, the, we just approved for Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam. Yes. Campground. They're right up on the river, yeah. and mm -hmm. you can see them. What's to say if someone else wanted to put yeah. another campsite further up? Yep. We'd well, have to say, well, you can't do that now. There's also <laughs> residences that can see. Well, that's that, the, yeah, that's fine. They just can't see everything else. Mm -hmm. So I just requested the addition of, or the consideration of the addition of numbers five and six. Yeah. Do you okay. guys have any questions for me on those two items? Um, does 
does five talk about two different things? Recreational vehicles and tent sites not within the boundaries of an approved campground shall be restricted to use between April 1st and October 31st. And then it goes on to talk about RVs being hooked up to potable water and septic, but so not during those time periods. What, it, what that is, what that means is that if, if you want to have your family come stay in your RV at your property, <coughs> that RV is required actually under the subsurface and the, and the drinking water regulations to be hooked up to potable water and septic, but it's not called out in our ordinance. Um, put it in there just because it's typical to put it in there when you put in the other pieces. What I'm looking for is a very specific start and stop dates to prevent people from living in RVs year round in somebody's yard because an RV is not, by definition, it is not intended for year round use in right. somebody's yard. So the potable water questions? and septic are irrelevant are if you're it. outside of those dates. So okay. Let me yeah. ask you two because questions. Because of those, those dates, you're not supposed they to be using Yep. Down. Terry. So why did why do we say or shall be able to be emptied per periodically? Uh, is, shouldn't it be? Uh, no, it just says and shall either. Have but or shall, or shall. Yes. Isn't it, uh, or right. shall be or able shall. to. So, so it needs the connection, or it needs to be. Do we not just water. require a hookup to a septic? Because if you are if now something I do have experience with here, if you have an RV at say you're out on Diamond Hill Road, you own property out on Diamond Hill, or, um, or you know, we're going to go camp at Rick's place out on Alley Pond. Bring it up. He has a septic system. So there is an ability to hook a uh, RV into a, an existing subsurface system. However, when you're in a closer to town and you're on town water and sewer, you don't have that ability to just dump in there. So then you need to be able to have right. it. Okay, or you're so just my, in a lot that has no septic or well. Or you can't get to the septic without driving over the leach pail and causing damage. So right. it needs to be, oh, we need to specify yes. that they need to be taken, either have a honey wagon to it or preferably because it's an RV, it should still be in a drivable condition. But someone, to according to this, someone can have um, an RV parked in their driveway from the date continuous from April 1st to October 31st. Mm -hmm. And, okay. Yep. So my question is, is this limiting when people can tent at their house? No. Because uh, uh, it just well, says and tent sites. not yeah, within should, the boundaries of... Honestly, part of that is you would think people would not be tenting all through the winter anyways. We do. Yeah, yeah, but you never yeah. know. <laughs> we do <laughs> every month. Just <laughs> right. I have one plan this month. Today. Today. Is today? Okay. today has been a day from H E double hockey sticks. So, just. so this is just basically talking about campsites. This isn't talking about This isn't talking about the R V parks. This is talking about at home what people Basically, we we're well. It's campgrounds and tent campgrounds and tenting grounds. Yeah. So you need to have the ten acres, right, for the for it to be classified as a campground or the tent grounds. But it, it's as an RV thing. Where else are we going to start? Right. Well, I'm not talking about yeah. the RV. I'm just talking but about I'm the saying, tenting. Shouldn't yeah. we just strike out the tent part, maybe? Um. If you guys are comfortable so with removing the tent part, that's my only well, question or, would be: or make Are it we a separate paragraph? Are, are we, if we put this as an ordinance, is this precluding somebody? And I and I would say, let's say somebody has a developable lot, right? And they have they've punched their well, they've punched their septic, and they're a home builder. They're building their own home, and they park a four season RV on their property, and they have it properly winterized. They, are we saying that during those months they can't they can't live in their RV while they're building their home? Is that well, is that what we're saying? If you're saying properly winterized, that means no, they can't live in it because when you winterize it, you put antifreeze into the water. Well, no, you would, there are four seasons. If you mean weatherize, so you can weather, insulate. Weather, weatherize. Insulate, okay, insulate just making sure we're following. That's, that's, that's what going. I meant. Okay. Yes. Um, well, technically, technically, um, camp RVs are a secondary use. So technically, officially, legally, under the code, they can't do that anyways because you cannot have a secondary use on a lot with no primary use. Really? Yes. So you cannot buy a plot. Is that a town or a state thing? That's code, state. That's you. Town is ordinances. Every when I say code, I'm talking state level regulations, hmm. ordinances, and that comes from a couple of That's different departments. That's illegal to do. You're not supposed to do it. 
You're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to do it. You're not now, supposed to do it. Now, do we, do we push the issue? <laughs> no, that's not where I'm going with this. Okay. This is more for the um, people that are trying to create, you know, the code allows <coughs> me as the, I call it the a-hole rule, the authority having jurisdiction, to allow things that are, you know, provided I can be sure that they're safe. Reasonable. Yeah. Yes, that reasonable. I can make reasonable reasonable changes. Um, what we're trying to prevent here are the people that are creating, in essence, a illegal campground on their property with mm -hmm. taking in every Tom, Dick, and Harry that might have a, an RV, an old broken down RV they can drag in and will never move again. Right. Okay. And this gives me more teeth because it gives them the summer season, which is when you would typically have your family and friends up. And honestly, this type of thing is something that is, I mean, if you have your, you have an RV and you have it hooked up and it's reasonably weatherized and your family's coming up for Christmas and they're going to stay for the week from Christmas to New Year's, you set that up, odds are good your neighbors are not going to call me because you happen to have out-of-town guests crashing in your RV. Yeah. However, you move somebody in and they're living there mm -hmm. and six months later they're still coming and going somebody's gonna call me mm -hmm. this gives me the teeth to make sure that you're not mm -hmm. impacting your neighbors negatively right, but according to this someone can live there for six months yeah but I mean okay. in the winter yeah okay so yeah. that, 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 that would be the short term mm -hmm. yeah it becomes yeah. a short it, it it, it just puts the teeth behind <clears throat> the RV being um, a recreational yeah, it's a vehicle, not vehicle. a living yeah. okay. situation. Yeah. All right. And if you guys want to remove the tents, I mean, hey. No, because I, I read further and it says tenting ground. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as it's not restricting a personal, like, if you want a tent out, like Rick said, once a month. You yeah. should be able to, and as long as we're not trying to restrict that. I'm just trying to yeah. prevent the we creation because we are so. starting to see that here, unfortunately, okay. where um, we're getting some people that are uh, creating some very, and it's it's a risk to them, the neighbors, as mm -hmm. far as sanitation, if mm -hmm. they're not able to remediate the waste, remove the waste. Uh, right. So, so what? by weatherization, you're meaning remove the waste? The uh, whole... When you winterize an RV, you yeah. not only pump out the waste, right. you also um, drain, they the, drain water the water. And, yeah. yeah, it needs to be it needs to be winterized, like you would do a boat or anything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just to. And we want to make that a rule, do we? Just like every other municipality I've worked in, yeah, it'd be mm -hmm. nice to have the teeth behind it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so parking and circulation, there was no changes. That was part B. Um, health and safety, there is. And this is still for campgrounds and tent, tented grounds. Yes. So uh, <laughs> the striking out a picnic table and. So basically, they just need a trash receptacle and a possible um, further down. It, it talks the about this. And yeah, adds and the dumpsters being in a fenced enclosure for all campgrounds. Okay. Um, but I... I'm going to be honest, that's just my petty Betty side, is the reality is with most of these people in RV parks, they're not going to have picnic tables out there. I don't feel like that's something we should be requiring. That's something that's an amenity that should be, you know. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone have any concerns about that? I don't want to have that? to enforce that, oh my God, you don't have a picnic table out here. Right. Right. I mean, if they want to put one there, they can. Yeah, they, they won't, an option pro and it not won't prohibit it. It right. just means that I don't have to go checking and making sure yeah. that everybody's got a gosh darn picnic table sitting yeah. outside the door, especially since a lot of these people will have just their camp chairs and a little mm -hmm. camp table and be much more comfortable than a picnic table. It looks like number four you need to number four. Yeah, that was my next one, is each campsite sh shall be provided with a masonry or metal fireplace provided in yeah, approved in writing by the fire chief. I just put question marks by that because I wasn't sure if that was something that you guys wanted to look at or think of. And the only reason I did that is because uh, I'm not sure, and I should have checked with the chief when I was talking to him earlier, um, I'm not sure if they are checking these uh, I know I know that a personal residence, you I've can get a fire pit approved. 
Okay. Um, and they come in, inspect it, and then it's, um, I can't remember the length of time, but I want to say it's like two or three years that it's approved for. Okay. I um, just put question marks by it because when I was... When I did it, I just wanted to make it as easy as but, possible I mean, for you guys and put the whole ordinance in there. At this point, it's a commercial thing. It's not just a home residence thing. So I would think that having approval with the fire department would be important. Okay. So can I ask, uh, we're talking about a campground, yeah. right? And a campsite within a campground. Mm -hmm. And them having a place for a fire. Yeah. Should we say may instead of shall? Yes, because okay. there are lots of ways that you can have a fire That's very true. Um, appropriately in a campsite yeah. at a campground. Yeah. Above, you know, we do it in scouts all the time, right? Yeah. 55 gallon drum cut off with legs put on it, a hibachi. I mean, there's a yeah, lot of different ways that you can. Solo stoves now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I just would be careful to limit it to simply a, a I, metal I, fireplace. Right. Well, I think what, what this is just trying to say is that they would provide a An fire area. Place. It does. Well, I mean, this just says it would provide a masonry or metal fireplace. It doesn't say anywhere that you couldn't have a fire other Elsewhere. than that okay. designated area. So are we going to say may or shall? May. Yeah. Me. Yeah, I, I, I put the question marks on it because I've had to do a couple of, and I don't understand this, and I probably should have said this to you before I say it on camera, but um, <coughs> I've had a couple of people that have had to call me for fireplace inspections because when they've called the fire department, they've been told that the fire department will not do that. So I've mm. had to go in and do the NFPA and do the sign-off for them for okay. their insurances. So yeah. I put the question uh, marks because okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. If that's something our fire department even offers as a service, but you yeah. answered that question. Yeah. Well, I, I know for a residence they do. Okay. I've done that a couple times. I now. feel like if we change that word from shall to may, we're completely changing the whole thing. Well, because if well, we. Well, they may be provided. Or they, they may right. be approved. No. No, no, may no. Be may be provided. They, right. So that way they don't have to they provide don't have a fireplace. They have to provide so, it. So but if they it, do, it has to be If they do, it has to be approved. Right. Right. So if you do it, you have to get approval. If you don't do it, you don't. No harm, no if they, so right. if they build masonry fireplaces or yep. stone fireplaces, yep. they or are getting barrel. approval Correct. before or after okay. the fact. How about this? Each campsite may be provided with a masonry or metal fireplace, which shall be approved in writing by That's the fire. Yes. Perfect. Okay. There you go. okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank Clarification, because words matter. All right. That's true. So now we're going down to a whole different thing temporary with definitions structure. and that's temporary temporary structure any structure that is used only temporarily for a maximum of xx days that is not permanently affixed to the ground or to any structure that is permanently affixed to the ground yeah i'm just trying to get in into the definitions and you guys can set the dates right um so, what, so are we talking about like right? portable storage shelters? Yeah. What, is that, what did you is have? Yeah, like yeah. Temporary, like uh, you know, pods. People moving pods on, and because they oh, yeah. they are temporary for the next right. three years. And, right. You know, right. temporary should have a a specific meaning. Yeah. In my world. So we need to pick a date. So would over? that that include like a? Um, Temporary storage. Porta potty sitting on. Uh, no, porta potties are porta potties are a little bit different because they are um, those are actually kind of regulated by the subsurface wastewater okay. re regulations, um, where they're required, where they're not allowed, that kind of thing. How long um, for durations? Construction of dumpsters. Uh, construction dumpsters. I usually handle under my permitting and the permitting requirements, okay. but it's more along the lines of things like like storage trailers or even depending on the length of time you guys choose or what you'd like to add to this, um, you know, things like greenhouses, temporary greenhouses that are up just for the summer purposes. Those are temporary. Yeah. Why the hell are they coming to me for them? You know what I mean? So. Well, that's a variable number then. <laughs> but if, you, but if well, you set a number, so let's say six weeks. For, or 90 days. We can even go for three months. Right, so 90 right. Days. If you say 90 days and you could put in this 
Um, Excluding agricultural use. Ex yeah. 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 Because I just I, I think of for like agricultural use. Right. Because a temporary yeah. structure. Okay, I've raised pigs before, and we moved them, yeah. so we have a temporary shelter for them, and we keep them for six months, and then. We get rid of them. Yeah. And then they go to freezer camp. Yes. Same so, thing with broiler chickens. Yeah. Right, yes. exactly. Same so with chicken we coops. Could do, I would be more than comfortable with an agricultural exemption. Okay. I just need so, something that gives me the teeth I need yeah. so that these people that are stockpiling the, the you know, trailer Junk. beds and yeah. stuff for storage, okay. they, those are not being set right on property lines, which they are. And mm -hmm. because it's a temporary structure. Well, temporary so do you feel that 90 days would be... I think it should be longer. I think you it think should, it should be, be like six months. Six months. I think six, months. Months. Well, I think six, I think if six months. If you think about the like. edges uh, construction trailer, for example, it's mm -hmm. going to be there for a long time. But that's, that's a exception. but that's for construction. That's a construction yeah. trailer. That's okay. a different thing. That's not we're, a temporary. But there are construction not, sites that, that have cargo containers full of what is that considered a permanent structure? No. Right. I at, but I look at like the guy who stores his boat under a shelter logic, right? Like you have a shelter logic in your backyard, you park your boat under it. Right. Nine months of the year. Probably. Close to nine months out of the year. I think six months is a long. Well, I mean, reasonable. some people leave their boat in there year round and only right. take it out a couple times a <laughs> year. Correct. Right. You know? Correct. But, but at, at that, that point, point it turns it's to a shelter. It's a permanent it's structure at that right. point. Right. You know, because <clears throat> if it's staying up for a year, it's all right. Not, so 180 uh, days. 180 days seems reasonable. Yeah, I think. I, th I think because you know, I know my friend um, had a pipe burst mm -hmm. in his uh, one of his apartments, mm -hmm. and so he had a pod. Yep. His yard while he did renovations mm -hmm. to the to the apartment. Um, I think that's very reasonable. And again, yes. that's think but again, that comes into line with the yeah, uh, I not, can make I, exceptions under for things three, like that that fall under a construction heading. Yeah. Yeah. But well, this is for is this is for the hoarder who wants storage. to have she all the things, that. all the things ever. So you're saying a storage container is temporary storage? Storage containers are supposed to be temporary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can apply for a building permit, put yes. them on a pad, and make them a permanent structure. Okay. okay. But if they're going to tell me that, no, I parked this directly on my property line and peed my neighbor off because it's a temporary structure that's been here for two years, that's not a temporary structure. Now, what <laughs> so. if you move it? From one spot, I'm just I'm just trying to say Don't if it's advocate. if it's temporary, and you move it and you change the use of it, we get a new hundred eighty days. Right? If days you, yeah. No, if it's a temporary structure, if it's a temporary thing that is brought onto your property at the end of that time period that you guys are going to set, okay. then it needs to be removed, discontinued. Yeah. So like, okay, but, so you've got your greenhouse up different. for the summer. Well, you've got your greenhouse up for the summer. Yeah. You take it down for the winter. Right. Then you put it back up well, in the summer, when the spring well, again. Then sometimes it's, for a greenhouse, it's, it's as easy as just removing the film off it. You know, because some of them, like I have a hoop house, and I only use it for a couple months, and it's just a film that goes on it. And when I'm done with it, I take the film off. Yeah, and when you take the film off, it's no longer a actual right. usable space. It's right. just a couple of friggin' poles in the ground yeah. and nothing a, that the snow is going to collect on. And, <laughs> yes, it's a birdie jungle gym. Yeah. It's nothing that the snow okay. is going to collect on and um, crush you. Now, what if someone had a trailer, like a, a truck trailer, and they take it off their property for a day after 170, 179 days and then puts it back on the next day after that? Does that would that reset that? I'm I'm just asking. No, because they didn't discontinue the use of it for any length of time. They I don't just know that we can it. tell people to discontinue. Well, this would be new. So anything that's there already is grandfathered in. Okay. Yeah. This would be new stuff coming in. Also, so if, no. storage trailers are already defined, and they it's limited to six months. So it's already six months. Okay. There's already so precedent in there. Six months is a, minus the ones that already have grandfathered in. Because there's some storage trailers that you you can drive by and they've They're been there. They're probably in violation. They're okay. in violation. Yeah. Okay. They're in violation. So. Is it? <laughs> yes, Jerry? There's three across the street from me that have been there for four years. Mm -hmm. And there's, I asked why are they still there, and nobody would give that answer. Okay. Uh, so you didn't ask no me teeth. why, and I, I've got uh, a lot <laughs> of really, those. Yeah. I've got a list of places that have them that are in violation. <clears throat> but okay. It won't be enforced. So, so 180 days. Answer? 180 days. I think 180 days 180 sounds reasonable. Days. Yep. Yep. Okay. 180. 180. <laughs> and signs. 
So, I know at the selectmen's meeting, there was an issue brought up about commercial signs on vehicles, lighted signs on vehicles. Light it. Like look, Domino's man. delivery. Domino's delivery. Do I look like the DOT? <laughs> no, but so Chasing my thought death. is this: if they're parked and they're not driving and they're over there, should the lights be off? And then when they go to deliver, the lights are on because no one downtown can have a lighted sign. But it's okay for a car to have a lighted sign. Uber does it. Lyft does it. Yeah. Right, but only when they're operating. Tuesday. Mr. Chair, you've got. Okay. You've got to start Jared, to your light. point, Tuesday night, American Legion. Paul and I were here, parked in the town's parking lot. The Domino <coughs> car was over there, and I can't remember if the light was on or not, but it was in the parking spot over in our lot. Over no, there. the light wasn't on. Wasn't on? Okay. Yeah. But that's what well, they do have a parking issue that they're trying to work on now. And right. I know that the uh, selectmen and the people at Great Works Construction are, are and the the the, well, the, the tenants of the that spot are trying to figure out a parking plan for that. But my concern is no one else can have a lit up sign. What's to say, like, I get it when they're driving to and from. Mm -hmm. They want to advertise, and that's great. But if they're just sitting there idling or the car's off and they have their lights on, I mean, who's to say Bad Wolf Butcher doesn't do that on their cars now? And then who, do, who does that for Untrucked? And who does it for, um, you know... Um, who's who's going to enforce this? Yeah. I, well, that would be a code enough. enforcement at that point. Uh, yeah. It, I'll just, not, I'll just it does say that all signs shall be externally eliminated, right. well, so maybe we uh, need to just modify that signs. Yeah. Right. Well, in the land use ordinance, that, that is correct. All the signs are supposed to be, supposed to be externally mm -hmm. lit. Mm -hmm. I'll which, have to do some research okay. on that because that <laughs> might fall under the... I think that's a DOT. Yeah, because yeah, it issue. says all signs must be stationary with no intermittent lights. Right. Right. But They're I don't know if they right. deem that an actual official sign under the... Right. Let me do a little research on that, Mr. Chair, and get back okay. to you. Okay. Um, because that is a good point. I just brought you it up because um, the last select, men's meeting, or select board meeting I was at it, it did get brought up yeah no um, and it definitely warrants looking into um, I just don't know and I because uh, even like a taxi most taxis they the lights are on they're when they're working yes. like when they're traveling with passengers if they're not traveling if they're going to a place to pick someone up the lights not on see I, I just want to make sure that I'm not telling you to put something in an ordinance that we don't have the legal right to do right, so right. and I me, totally yep. yeah yep. and I think actually the change I wanted to make I think James doesn't want made right yeah. so does Cumberland Farms gas prices lit up I was going to yeah, okay. Okay. skip okay we're, so skipping C. we're gonna skip we're gonna ignore the whole C thing okay okay we're not gonna touch that we're gonna leave that alone <coughs> so because James told me to leave it alone Okay. Now we're going on to F. I'll tell you, just because uh, the the content of the signs is not regulated by this ordinance came right from our attorney from like yeah. last year. Say that again, please. The the content is not regulated by this ordinance. That's the original verbiage. The parts I was going out. to change that to because the and you know there's been a big push about not having the words cannabis or marijuana on signs, so that's why I was going to change that. But and I've been informed that that original statement that I wanted to change came originally from the town attorney. So we're oh, completely that confused. I am more confused than I was. So they yeah. want to keep the content of signs is not regulated by this the section. Content, the yeah. content of the signs. Yes. yes. So I was going, going to unstrike that and the rest of that sentence goes away. Yes, yeah. correct. Pretend oh, that, pretend that, that that was never yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, yeah. the, whole, the whole amendment's going away. The whole amendment. That whole, so all, all of C, C is getting left no, alone. No, no, C is staying as is. Uh, pretend, right, okay. Pretend it's nothing, not changing. Pretend nothing on that page exists above F, and that's the only thing you need to concern what the rest is going to stay the way it was. So okay. what C will, says, will say is only what is stricken out. Right, right. content of signs is not regulated by this that's section. That's all it will yeah. say. Okay. So you get the first amendment stuff. Yes. Uh, Freedom of speech. Gotcha. 
Yep. All right. Uh, I'll give you this. I, I agree. I didn't, I didn't and, like that. Like, yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's been something that's been being yeah, pushed, so I was going to bring it to the front, but actually we've been very fortunate that our um, marijuana and cannabis people have been very cooperative on that yeah. aspect anyway. Yeah. So, <coughs> so, so then we just <coughs> added the directional right? signs for this in the general sign language carried so over from with the with F, office. properly licensed home occupations shall be allowed not more than one official business directional sign, OBDS. The OBDS must be permitted through the MDOT and comply with all OBDS requirements. It's not tied back to the other thing we yeah. talked about. Yes. It's, it's okay. a copy yeah. and paste. Okay. It right. just gotcha. puts it in the sign section okay. as well. Yep. So now we're talking into dimensional requirements. This was not me, so these are Jeremy's suggestions, so I'm bowing out of this conversation. So this talks about minimum lot sizes. Almost four acres. And the only change is R3s. Two changes to the R3. Minimum lot size with public sewer and water. And minimum lot size with septic in square feet. 160 grand. That's oh, that's 160,000 square feet. Square feet, yeah. Like three and a half acres. Yeah. Um, Do you have anything? I mean, the idea of this is to prevent small lots in R3. R3 zone. Which, I mean, that just is trying to limit how many Which subdivisions you can residential agriculture, right? But well, I think I think subdivisions do themselves are, are controlled in R three. Yeah, the amount of building permits and houses you can build in R three are controlled. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know making almost a four acre house lot in R three is excessive, in my opinion. Yeah. I uh, I would agree with that as well. Um, it you go from R two, which is twenty thousand, which R three right now is at ninety thousand. So that's that's a huge jump when R one's only at ten thousand. So ten thousand, twenty thousand, ninety thousand. I mean, I think the thought process is not to make R three into an R two or R one by cramming them all together. Right, one hundred and sixty thousand is excessive for mm -hmm. one single individual house out in R three. Right, right. Um, whether we raise it or keep it, I guess that is the question. I, I don't think one hundred and sixty is the right number. Um, I mean, ninety thousand is like two point three acres. acres. Yeah. 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 Which is a weird, I mean, if you're going to do it by square feet, I guess, but if you're going to do it by acreage, I would have rounded it to two comp, and a half. That's a good and compromise. Is three acres reasonable right. for that area? Say, I, mean, I think one mind. of the things that we should consider, if I may uh, add some input, you know, Jeremy and I and, and James and mm -hmm. Mike had a pretty lengthy conversation about the preservation of farm and forest land here in, in town. And one of the things that came up, and one of the things that was brought up by um, somebody sent an email, I think, um, was that, you know, one of the things we want to be careful of is to not devalue a farmer's right. retirement. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, a farm, farmer may have 100 acres, mm -hmm. and we we now just cut that property value in half. <coughs> right, right. By doubling <clears throat> the density requirement. Right. So I think that the, the balancing... And it, might, it might not be the farmer, but it might be their kids that they don't want to farm anymore you know, and they want to sell the property. Tom Tom mentioned it from the 70s. He said, you know, he saw, you know, the farmers, the kids don't want to come into the farming business, mm -hmm. so the farmer sells a lot to pay the taxes this year and eat. Mm -hmm. Sells a lot, sells a mm -hmm. lot. So, and, and most farmers, that is their IRA. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'd, I'd be reluctant to raise it above the, it's over two acres now. So mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. 87,000 square feet is two acres. It's already over two acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you have 10 right. acres and you keep it where it is now, you can do four lots. But right. if you have 10 acres and you change it to three acres even, you're only getting three. three. Two. Yeah. 
Oh, three eight. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's math. Math. yeah. that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, but I, I, I guess the question is, at what scale is it? Like, if it's like you said, if it's ten acres versus a hundred acres versus a right. thousand acres, right. mm -hmm. we want to protect farmland. But if someone has ten acres of farmland they should be able to divide it in four spots. Right. But if someone has, but at the same time, it's who are we to say that, all right, 10 acres, you can subdivide that in four ways, but then when you get past a certain number, you have to spread yeah. it out more. So I, mean, I guess if I think about it in the opposite terms, I have a 2.3 acre lot and I have a house on it mm -hmm. and I have a septic on it and I have a well on it and I have lots of room around the rest of the property to walk and I think it's plenty big enough for a house. Mm -hmm. And if I had to have three acres or four acres, what am I now doing with all of that extra land? Mm -hmm. So in my personal opinion, where we are at 90,000, even if it only went to 100,000. And are you R3? I'm R3, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm in the exact same position. I like 2.3 acres, R3, and... Uh, Got plenty of land. Yeah, mm -hmm. plenty of land. I think more yeah. land. Yeah, it's going to save more land, but only for that one homeowner. Right. Mm -hmm. right you know, yeah. I mean. All right. So I, I feel like we're all in agreement that we are not changing that. I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we're striking those out. Also, the the <coughs> other issue, which is well taken, is that you if you do have. A farmer who wants to cut a certain portion of his land off for some sort of development, uh, which is his right, uh, in the R3 area, all of a sudden you're cutting the value significantly yeah. Yeah. for them, and, and, and that's and fairly arbitrary. You know, we had a lengthy conversation about one of the things that we're looking at is doing a, um, what do you call that, uh, development rights? Probably it's called a, a density uh, density development fee. But basically, the idea would be you'd be able to pay into a fund to add density to a project to be able to add By lots. protecting other property. Yeah, and that fund would go into the purchase of open space. Right. So, so there, there's an example of you know a farmer has 100 acres and he wants to transfer his development rights to somebody else to build in where we want the high density mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. You do this, you just cut his his retirement in half. Right. Right. Yeah. Again, another you know, another example. Yeah. I think one way to achieve the same idea is to look at with conventional subdivision, planning board can require five to ten percent open space within a subdivision. Mm -hmm. I would propose considering upping that to twenty percent, mm -hmm. and then for a cluster, right now it's thirty percent. So looking at increasing that to maybe forty or fifty percent. I don't talk about <coughs> like about fifty might be high, but maybe forty forty percent. But requiring more open space and putting more regulations around what open space is preserved is another way of kind of getting to that same idea of yeah. increasing the minimum. It's a good size. idea. Mm -hmm. Do we have that? No, yeah, I, I think when it comes to the green space, my thought is if we increase that, we should be able to also. Sh like make the lot sizes smaller, so that has that more gen give and take. You're saying more general green space, but smaller indivis individual lot mm -hmm. requirements. Right. So what's exactly. the minimum on a cluster? What's the minimum lot size for it's like a thirty percent right now? Right. You mean lot size? Yeah. Or green space? Lot size. Lot Your lot sizes. Size you have to. You you can't do any more in a cluster than you can do in a traditional. So whatever your traditional lot size, if you're Parcel would only allow you to build 10 conventional lots, break 10 conventional lots based on your dimensional requirements, then you can only do 10 in a cluster. Mm -hmm. The lots themselves can be pretty small. Yeah, the yeah. lots can be tiny at that point. It yeah. just becomes... It's just for infrastructure costs and stuff yeah. like that. that but everything's but closer together, so like instead of building massive amounts of roads, massive yep. amounts mm -hmm. of piping and stuff like that. It's all condensed into a local area. So it's based on the overall size of the project, of the parcel, right. not necessarily, yeah. it has to be like 0.9 acres. It, no, it's, no, no, you still need to meet the, the, you, the your dimensional, dimensional yeah. requirements. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So your conventional, your conventional layout, if you were not doing a cluster, 
has to meet all those the same dimensional yep. requirements. So if you change that, that would change all of that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So moving on, the next change was in 6.3.1 residential growth, growth limitation provisions. So we're striking out A and B. James, you're gonna get Part of that proposal would be to um, replace it. This is pro this is proposed by Cyrus as well. He's, he he brought in a <coughs> uh, growth limitation ordinance from North Berwick, and the proposal is to replace it with um, a a 33 dwelling unit cap, which would be the average of the past 10 years. A plus five percent, five percent of the average of the past ten years, and that is the <clears throat> lowest we can go by state law. So a hat thirty-three would be if we wanted to put in a growth cap. Thirty-three would be the lowest cap that could be put in. So, all right. So with the growth cap, I think that we're trying to cap it in certain areas. Because, like, downtown, R1 zone, we shouldn't be capping it. We should be trying to promote it. Because that's where everyone wants the growth is, in the downtown area. I, maybe we should try and think of trying to cap it in rural, more rural areas and not just as a, in general. Yeah, if you took this kind of the same approach, if you took the average of the past 10 years and added 5% in, like, R3, mm -hmm. it's more like 14 or 15. Okay. So you can put the, the limit at R3 and aquifer protection. So basically R3. I mean, R3 is huge in Berwick. I and mean, that, and R, there's a major correlation between R3 growth and the town growth. I mean, right. R3 is the driver of growth. So that's, and I can provide that to the board, some of that data. Just okay. so we, we've had this growth. conversation about, you know, limiting growth and because there's a conception that, you know, the town is growing at an unsustainable rate. But all the data proves that that's not true. So why would we be trying to limit growth? One of the reasons is just limiting, like kind of regulating the spikes to kind of smooth out some of the the most costly things to the town are spikes because you have to increase classroom sizes so you can spread it out right. a little bit. The last major the spike was in the 80s. That's the population... <clears throat> I mean, we went from 1,800 to 358 in the 90s, and then now in 2010s, we're at 745. I mean, this is in thousands, so we're at like 7,500 range. I mean, I kind of agree with less at that point. I mean, why? Are, I understand the thought of this is we're trying to limit the growth in the R3 because we're trying to protect farmland. But how are we going to protect farmland fairly? Because at the same time, it's like what Les just said about even the lot sizes. How are we trying to devalue someone else's property by limiting what they can do on it? Can I derail the choo-choo train? So listen, I have a question for James because I have one issue with 6.3.1. Is this looking like it will, whatever is going to replace this, is going to replace it in time for the vote? Or if not, can we look at adding that, uh, that correction that we need to based on what happened out on Wentworth? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That just, it goes by like a technicality about... Just clarifying. I would like to just clarify it in there. So my issue with 6.3.1 is when you read this, and we actually had to go to the attorney for this because what happened is there was a subdivision that was um, approved through the planning board, and it was just lots, and the lots were sold for intent to build. Now, it was the, the subdivision itself was split in two zones. The fourth building permit I received would have been under 6.3.1 if you read it with a certain slant absolutely not approvable however the person that purchased that lot had already sold their home had a handicapped partner was forced to live in an, an unsafe unhandicapped accessible place 
I reached out to the attorney because I was like, what, what the hell are we going to do here? And because the, where the already approved permits fell into different zones, if you read this with the other slant, then you can have three permits per year, per subdivision, per zone. So we just want to clarify. I want to mm -hmm. clarify that mm -hmm. so that it is on the books and above board that if this does not get replaced, I would like to see that clearly drawn out as the attorney says that it can be. So I would like to put that little bug into your ear if this does not get replaced before the voters because I don't like anybody having any reason to question if what I'm yeah. doing is what is legal and right by the residents. I, 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 th I think I would like to see what would what we would be replacing this with the before ordinance. we strike anything out. Okay, so... I mean, that, that just makes did the, sense. Did the attorney have any recommended language for, for what would pass legal muster? Because I, we, we could speculate all day, but um, it still has no, to pass. No, he did not, but no. whatever we write up, again, just a, a reminder for the whole board, mm -hmm. you guys write things up, they go to the select board, and then they go to the attorney. So mm -hmm. anything that's not worded right, mm -hmm. he knows what mm -hmm. my intent is with that because obviously he and I had several long conversations about mm -hmm. this. Um, if, if I word it wrong when I present it to you, he'll fix it. <clears throat> okay. He'll make it legal because he knows what, I, what I'm trying to do. And I'm just, it was a situation where I was glad to see that the, um, that the vagueness played out in the favor of the resident who was, in my opinion, slighted and put in a very terrible position. Um, okay. What you are talking about, replacing is already right there. Next page. If you turn one more, Mike, it's right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's replaced with gross, gross ordinance proposal. Yeah. There's three pages of, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah. not. I. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm saying if okay. that's not. If that replace. If this whole section doesn't get replaced, for with the growth ordinance proposal, yeah. if that doesn't happen in time for okay. this set to go to the voters, then I would like the addition of that clarification <coughs> to this existing. To be placed. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm clear as much. Which allows, right. which okay. allows the building of three houses per zone. Per zone, yes. per subdivision. Mm -hmm. Just to just to make sure that nobody questions that what we're doing is above board. With the growth. And for you, and for you guys too. But would to you want to also? Let me. I just thought of something. Would you want to have the percent? Like what percent of that lot is in which zone? Right. If it's yeah, only I'll a very the, small percentage of the parcel, is I'll write the verbiage yeah. up for that. Mm -hmm. um, what I based well, it on for isn't, this isn't um, as a zone. The the zone that is the majority of the lot is that lot zone. So That's for if a, you yeah. yes and no because right, yes under and, code under code. Like your setbacks, if you are partially in R2 and partially in R3 and you build that house in the R2 section, right. those are your setbacks. If you build it in the R3 section, right. those are your setbacks. Right. One of these lots is split pretty much 50-50. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's, I, it might actually even be worth putting it on. Uh, yeah. I'm just on pretty that sure that, that, that it's in the land use ordinance, ordinance that if, if yeah. it's the majority of one, it's classified under that. And but I understand what you're saying. Well. Like when you're so building we add a, setbacks. We should, add a, uh, we should add something for those 50 50 lots that right. in the event that if it's 50 yeah. 50. Yeah, pick one. <laughs> Where your house going? Yeah, yeah pick go, one. I mean, if your lot is divided, why would you not go with the more lenient? to benefit the landowner. Depends on well, the, well it, it depends on what you plan on doing with it because um, and it depends on what the ordinance if it's, says. If it's for agriculture use, you can have more animals in R three than you can in R two. Like density wise. And that I mean that's the only way I see it is because like yeah. seven or eight I just want to make sure that we get something in there to clarify that it's Okay. Based on the zones, because I don't want people thinking that I am sub, I, not just not just the residents. I don't want the board thinking that I am taking what you guys are saying and then just throwing it out the window. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, looking at this growth management permit thing, we don't set the pricing. Right. This is this saying two fifty and two hundred, whatever. We don't set the pricing. Right. We just recommend a price. And then the selectmen vote on that. Is that going to be enough, or is that too much, or? 
That's on page two of three on that. This is this, this is copied from North Berwick. Is this what this is? I don't know, look at me. I had nothing to do yeah. with this one. I backed right off six point three point one. So I'm, I'm not a fan of North Berwick's group but, management permit process. Okay. Because again, it's it's it, this is what I was talking about, and it's limiting the amount of permits. And right, we don't want to we don't want to do that. They actually limit uh, multifamily permits to six per year. Oh well, six growth permits per year, so it's it's really counterproductive. That's why North Berwick is actually called No Berwick. Oh, um, can I back you guys up for half a second? Yeah, uh, I noticed a strikeout on uh, six point three point one point E uh, for determining number of permits to be issued if a parcel is split or conveyed into two parcels, it looks like they struck out three years yeah, prior. So to five, yeah. Five. I was actually going to bring that up, too. Um, um, I don't know who did this, this, all this stuff. I, I, I am against, I'm against changing that. Um, uh, right, and that's what, so that stuff that was, that was struck out. It was just, it was just that number three, was changed. Was on the replacement with this. Yeah. They yeah. I'm assuming that the, I, like They're I said. They're trying to limit the growth. Well, I'm not sure who did this, but I'm assuming, based on my experience with subdivision law, that they went from three to five because five years is lot split for subdivision law. So they're probably trying to bring whoever. Who did this? Cyrus. Cyrus, okay. Um, <laughs> like how I say that's so accusatory. Who did this? <laughs> Sorry, James. Uh, I'm not hangry. I'm just getting sleepy. Um, so that's what I'm assuming is, but I just, I have no opinion either way. I just wanted to make sure yeah. we didn't skip something that Terry was going to ask me if we missed later, because I don't want to have to answer to her either. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to leave that at three or what? Yeah. <laughs> was that, that what the consensus is? <laughs> I've heard the rumors about you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so leave it at three. <laughs> leave it at three. Let's hold off, because reading... Subdivision growth permit restrictions. This is part of that. The total number of growth management per permits issued for apartments and subdivisions located in any zoning district shall not exceed 75% of the total number of growth management permits being issued in a single fiscal year as determined pursuant to Section 6.3.4. If the number of growth management permits issued for non-subdivision lots on a first-come, first-served basis exceeds 45% of the no total number of growth management permits being issued in a fiscal single fiscal year, then the maximum number of growth management permits allocated for apartments and subdivisions, i.e. 75% of the total number of the for the fiscal year shall be reduced accordingly to accommodate a proportionally greater number of non-subdivision allocated lots. In no instance shall the total number of growth management permits issued within a fiscal year exceed the number established by the Board of Selectmen. Wow, those are certainly all words. <laughs> <laughs> that is, if anything, I would want to simplify what we have instead of making, like, we're, we're taking a less than a page thing and turning it into a three page edition thing on limiting growth which like Les said we're not we shouldn't be limiting growth when Maine says that there is a housing crisis we don't have enough homes for everyone and it's not just us, our, our town and the there's no state. data to say that we're growing at an unhealthy rate right there is no spike yet I mean if there was a big spike in Maybe yeah, I don't think you know. Quite quite frankly, I think that the economy is cooling off. The, mm. the housing market is cooling off. Yeah, is. I think that the the housing market itself is going to correct or prevent any spike. Yeah, it usually does. Anyway. So would consensus be that we're just going to table this for later? I would think. Do so. we have any? Do we, do we have any mechanism for growth management though? In in the event, you know, the data changes. Is there any mechanism in place? Well, we'll just come back to it and say, hey. Yeah, twice a year, right? Yeah. Twice yeah. a year we have a mechanism to yeah. put it before the voters. And our, so our current mechanism is the 6.3.1 that was originally struck out. Right. That's our current one. Right. The A, B, C, and D. Yeah. So let's and just. 
Those are, that's the that's the original. So mechanism. twenty permits in a given subdivision. The one that struck struck out residential growth limit provisions. That's for R two. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's with public sewer per and water. Subdivision. Yeah, okay. in town, in town, it's public utilities is twenty, and uh, well and septic is three. Yeah. So are we in consensus that we're going to hold off on this? Yes. I think we need to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is getting tabled. Yeah. When do you want us to throw this back in here? Um, we can keep talking guys, about it every any meeting that. Give I you mean, guys a chance to review it. Yeah. Maybe in a couple I mean, of meetings. I can show you what R three just so you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Speak up on the mic. Sorry. <laughs> I can, wow. I can, I can I'm the yeah. boss. That's all about the boss. You That's why he's the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I have no authority here. Yeah. yeah, no, I just, I'm going to show you what an R3 cap looks like, just just so you have information on that. Yeah. Just what it looks okay. Like. Cool. Thank you. I mean, if, if the average is 14 to 15 um, houses are built a year in R3, I mean, or subdivisions are, you know, that's still not that much. If it was like a thousand or five hundred, then th we're talking serious numbers here, and then that's a huge concern. We haven't even issued that many permits for the whole town, so. right? So, well, I think that I think that you know limiting wherever the basically where there's no water and sewer, mm -hmm. three permits a year, uh, is going to um, it slows them down a lot. It's going to slow them down, yeah, oh, yeah. because because you know from from a development standpoint, mm -hmm. you know you got to buy the land, you've got to get it through engineering, get it through the planning board. You know, there's a huge outlay of money up front to sell three lots yeah, at, a time, yeah. at a time. So that that in and of itself mm -hmm. is going to slow the growth yeah. in those areas for sure. Yep. All right. So this one is Brendan and Julia Cooney. Um, Some things are are not really related to what the planning board. It's like one's just a comment about the playground. They're happy that the pl playground's finally getting finished. Um, ample parking and traffic flow planning <coughs> with project construction. And they're like they're, talk, they're like talking about traffic. the edge yeah. at that point. I mean, the basically I know with the edge. The traffic studies aren't going to happen until it's all built. That's they did the parking stuff, and they have enough spots. And then once, if there is a higher demand and flow, then that's when all the traffic studies are going to get done. Is that correct, James? We we've done a traffic study. We know that like there's a, a backup for the light. Yeah. We have some I ideas that could help alleviate. But the con like the congestion at our intersections, our intersections actually work fairly well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, most of our intersections where we they are they are required to do pedestrian improvements. Mm -hmm. That's part of their requirement through yeah. the D DOT. Mm -hmm. They have to do some significant pedestrian. Um, but overall, our their intersections have been studied that they will work. Yeah. Even with the added traffic, it's just the obviously the traffic light is an issue. Yeah, there's things that we can do to improve it, like kind of like we added a like a right green arrow. Yeah, that's one way yeah. that yeah. could help alleviate some of that congestion. Yeah. But if, well, the and the traffic going across the bridge from Summersworth, how do you fix that? I think the bulk that of this. bridge tunnel. <laughs> yeah, tunnel. double decker bridge. Yeah, double decker bridge. <laughs> yeah. I, I think. I think a lot of this stuff is uh, town manager pass. and our public works, so I'm going right. to very unceremoniously say, hey, James, yeah, you want to take this out? I mean, yes. one, another, another thing I was looking at is yeah. limiting okay. further marijuana dispensaries. I mean, yeah. the town just voted on removing the cap, so, I mean, it's kind of contradictive to what the, the town just voted on. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, 
I think that it speaks to the fact that this is like a well thought out thing from a citizen's point of view. Yes. Right? And yeah. a little yes. bit like emotional, like don't we have enough? Yeah. I get that. Right. hundred percent. I validate that. Yeah. But it all comes back to what meets the land use ordinances. Right. And change comes from changing the land use ordinances. Right. So that's where I'd like the public to understand, yes, your opinion is important, but, but the change takes place in... You've got to look at the land use ordinance correct. and then see what How needs it applies. To, yes. What needs to be changed. Yeah. Can I just say one thing, though? I yes. do think that when we put out an invitation for ideas and thoughts and opinions, yep. we that to. we're going to get to uh, a, a, a pretty wide array. Oh, yeah, and they need to be heard. That's I mean, right. we need to see them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and we, we just need to see what is adjustable and what's just right. an opinion of What's something. actionable, what's right. not. Right. Right. But it's it's great that people are actually yes. oh, yeah, it's great taking to get the time I mean, to write this. And we mm -hmm. and we made sure that you guys were provided. Well, Terry made sure you guys were provided with copies of everything. But she yes. and I had discussed it. And even though some of the things that came in were obviously not uh, planning board purview, um, mm -hmm. we don't want to discourage anybody from sending anything <coughs> in because she and I do not mind mm -hmm. being the clearinghouse to get the things that are perhaps public right. works related to them or town manager related to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. We want to hear from people regardless of who we have to direct it to. Right. That's very important. I'm glad Terry brought that well said. up. Thank you. All right, so moving on. That, I mean, that's a pretty good view of the land use ordinance amendments. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward and new business, review of planning board policies and procedures. So I messaged James a couple weeks ago asking for a copy of this, and then I figured that we could go through this. There is, um, there's a few things that we need to adjust. Like with number one, the Berwick Planning Board shall consist of five regular and two alternate members. The town's already voted that we're just seven regular members. Mm -hmm. So um, changing it of five regular and two alternates just to seven regular members. Um, that would be one of the things. Um, that takes care of a bunch of the next few ones. There, there's, yeah, there's a couple. It's like the number four with the quorum. It changes the quorum from three to four. There's um, also a cross out on two, then. Um, Yes, yeah. Alternates for yeah. one year, there are no alternates. Right, yeah. Alternates would be stricken out. Um, we would not be voting on this today. It would be the next meeting. Um, we basically would discuss these today, and then the next meeting we'd be voting on this stuff. But this is just to kind of tighten up. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Oh, yeah. On number four, Thank you. what was the change on number four? Um, the quorum for a regular or Is special five? meeting shall be established when four members oh, four. are in attendance. Thank you. And then uh, it would be stricken out that alternate members may be used yes. to establish the quorum mm -hmm. when so authorized mm -hmm. by the chairman. Right. Um, uh, so, back up number three, the secretary yeah. may be regular or alternate. Yeah, that's members. also. So I'll just go, kind of go through them, I guess. Um, so number two is regular members shall be appointed by the Board of Selectmen for staggered three-year terms. Period. Mm -hmm. All members shall be sworn as required by law. Appointees must be legal residents of the town of Berwick when appointed and while serving. When there is a permanent vacancy, the board chairman is to notify the municipal officers who must within 60 days of its occurrence appoint a person to serve for the unexpired term. Number three, officers of the planning board shall be chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. The chairman and vice chairman shall be regular members of the board and shall be elected for one-year terms at the first meeting in January. Can we eliminate the uh, secretary job? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> so we are we'd have to bunch. It point? would be the chairman, vice chairman, and secretary. And then you could take out shall be regular members of the board because right, they right. are. Yeah. It would just be they would they shall be elected for one year terms at the first meeting in January, and then all the alternate member stuff would be stricken out, and then. It also the planning office secretary shall serve as clerk to the board. 
I mean, there isn't really any clerical things. That's Terry. Um, excuse you. Who do you think is editing these? There is two clerical stuff. Well, I'm saying for, <laughs> yeah. For he you guys there to... is, I'm saying for the board. Yeah. We don't have clerical. But that's why we serve as a clerk. Do we need that? Well, this says the planning office secretary. It doesn't say the okay. planning board secretary. Oh, there's no... Yeah, the planning office I mean, office we could secretary. strike out secretary and just say the planning office... If that makes more sense. Sure. I like that. There okay. We go. I like it. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, no, number four, no official business be, may be conducted without a quorum present. A quorum for regular or special meetings shall be established when four members are in attendance. We're striking out alternate members. So then it goes to if any member has or has been declared by the chairman to have a conflict of interest, said member shall not be counted in establishing a quorum for that case. If a member has not attended all meetings when the application has been considered to include public hearing, if any, and has not fully familiarized him herself with the records of meetings not attended, that member shall not be counted in establishing a quorum. Should that be and or? Because if you're not present for a meeting, but you review the material and familiarize yourself, you can still be a voting member, is my understanding. Right, that's what it says, if any, and has not fully... F and or. It should be... Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's it's saying, that is saying hard, you have to have been at the meeting and you have to have reviewed all the things. I think it should be an and or. So yeah, it gives you the, the latitude if you missed a meeting but you caught up on all the paperwork, you could still be a voting member. Yeah. And I think that's reasonable, if everybody agrees. I think so, right after if any, and slash or has and not slash fully. Because oh. how I understand it right now yeah, yeah, yeah. is if you have fully familiarized yourself with the records of the meeting, not attended. Yeah, I think it makes sense the way it's written. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. If a member has not attended all meetings, when the application has been considered to include public hearings, if any, and has not. This is just saying if you haven't fully familiarized with yourself, oh, you I cannot. You. I got you. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, thank you for helping us. Yep. Kid. Oh yeah, no worries. <laughs> In so the just do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> if you do your homework, you get to vote otherwise. You yeah, yourself. yeah. And all you have to do is just state that you, you know, either talk to me or talk with Irish or Terry and say that. I wasn't at the meeting, but I, reviewed. I have watched the, that last meeting, and I'm up to date with everything. That's that's all that has to be said. Yeah. In the event a quorum is not present, the board members are authorized to request that the chairman reschedule the meeting to another date and to adjourn the meeting. If the date is other than a regular meeting date, the secretary is responsible for, for providing adequate notice to the board members, mun municipal officials, and the general public. Should that be changed to the clerk? Clerk, yes. The clerk. Mm -hmm. The clerk is responsible, yep. not the secretary, because we love you, well, Paul, but... Hold who's on. The clerk? Hold on. No. I'm the clerk? <laughs> She's not a clerk, is she? Yeah. Yes, I because am? the planning <laughs> office says up here shall serve as, as a clerk to the, to the board. board. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So we need okay. to change that Previously yeah. defined. to the clerk. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Thanks for explaining I've that. I've never been a clerk kid, before. <laughs> <laughs> We're sharing the brain over well, there. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> oh, you I didn't even know I was do. the clerk. She has yeah. one cell. I have one cell. And we kind of like bash them together and make it work. I was the shortest serving secretary in history. <laughs> 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 All right. He's just itching to get off that. Good luck. <laughs> so number five, all matters other than final votes or where the chair requests a call of roll shall be decided by a show of hands. A simple majority of the members voting shall be sufficient for any motion properly seconded to pass. When a motion results in a tie vote, it fails. That should be all right. right. Um, number six, regular meetings shall be held on the first and third Tuesdays, uh, Thursday, sorry, for each month unless such day is a holiday. If such is the case, the meeting scheduled for that day will be canceled. Oh, excuse me. No meeting will be held during the first week of July or the third week of De in December unless the board, by a majority vote, determines that such a meeting shall be held. Number seven, special meetings may be called by the chairman or in his or her absence by the ch vice chairman 
or by a majority vote of the planning board. Number eight, no regular cross-out alternate member shall be allowed to participate or to vote in any discussion or deliberation of the board when that member has declared or the board has determined that the member has a conflict of interest in the case under discussion. Conflict of interest means direct or indirect pecuniary interest, which includes pecuniary benefit to any member of the person's immediate family, to his employer, or to the employer of any member of the person's immediate family. It also includes a situation where the board member by reason of interest is placed in a situation of temptation to serve the member's own personal interest instead of the public's interest. Any question of whether a member must be disqualified from voting, voting on a particular matter must be decided by a majority vote of the members present except the member who, has, who is being challenged. So I have two things to say about that. One mm -hmm. is just a kind of a grammatical thing is towards the end when it says um, of whether a member must be disqualified from voting on a particular matter, if you're recusing, you're recusing from discussing also. So it's not just the vote, it's about, like if, if we think somebody shouldn't, right, should but, be recused. Right. So it should say whether a member must be recused, and that covers discussion and voting, as opposed to here, it's just saying only from voting, disqualified from voting. Does that make sense? Like, any question of whether a member must be disqualified from voting on a particular matter? Well, you can't have discussion and then say you can't vote. Right? The, a recusal is you can't do either. I think recusal is a is separate it? matter. Yes. I think this is, in the event like something came before the board and it was to, if there was discovery that led everybody up here for the most part right. is a gentleman and a will recusal, recuse themselves. A recusal I would think is voluntary while yeah. if, if right. you're voted as a conflict of interest you're forced into it. I think okay. that's the, dif the difference. So that's it kind of comes up after the, the fact sand. as opposed yeah. to yeah. The I think yeah. a good yeah. example Rick would have been if you did not recuse yourself on the Woodland. Yeah. Uh, they, the board yeah. members could have voted to recuse you yep. if you did not recuse yourself. And I think the intent is that that discussion would happen prior to any discussion yes. about the actual project. Right. Right. No, so, yeah, you yeah, would yeah. think. Yeah. But like you said, though, in, in discovery, it might come out, right? right. Yeah. you know, yep. that, oh, shoot, I'm related to the mm -hmm. engineer's right. daughter's friend or whatever. And a reasonable person would recuse himself. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to keep unreasonable people reasonable, I think. Right. Is yeah. the, so then the other thing <laughs> was, and, and I don't want to get into the, the weeds on this, but um, in my situation before, I was recused from discussion and voting, but there was a procedural problem that the board did not follow. And I was not allowed to say, hey, wait, stop, time out, we can't do it that way. I wonder, should there be an opportunity for a recused member to be able to at least call a point of order for a procedural issue? I think any member of the community can do that if you go up to speak publicly, unless I'm mistaken. Like, um, you, can, you can raise that. The candidate. public can't, but if a majority vote of the planning board can. But I wasn't so allowed to speak. The chair can say no. And if other people of the board vote it out, it can get changed. But if the chair says no, it's it's a no. Or if the chair says yes, it's a yes. So would I ask permission if I could say something in that situation? Yes. And yep. you would say yes or no? Yep. And if you said no... And other people in the board wanted to hear what you had to they say... They could vote majority. Vote. They could veto that. Yep. Okay. That's reasonable. And so I guess it just needs to be clear that a recused member can ask permission to speak under Mike. certain situations. But right. yes, not yeah. not on the procedure, <coughs> but not on the question. <coughs> right. Well, I guess it would be up to the chair to decide whether they could speak on whatever they're asking for. Right. Can I ask one question, Rick? Um, are you referring to the meeting? Um, I believe there was a public hearing. Point. I believe you recused yourself. There was a public hearing, but then a lot of things were talked about and discussed. The public hearing was then closed. More things were discussed, and you had asked to 
at that point make a statement? My Is statement right? was going to be procedural. In other words, uh, and, and it, it, we could go back, I don't want to, right. but basically we were given a plan, we voted to approve the plan without getting copies of the plan, then we took that back the next meeting, mm -hmm. then we did the exact same thing the next meeting when we shouldn't have again, but we let it go through and we never went back and talked about it again. So that second time we did the exact same thing, I wanted to say we can't do this again, but I wasn't allowed to speak. I'm just wanting to make sure that there is a clear written policy that says somebody in recusal can ask permission for input and then either be told no and vetoed or not. In addition to the public hearing portion, which you are allowed as a recused In that case, person. I could. Yeah, right. as, as so, so a you're member of the public, you have the right to speak in a yeah, public Yeah, but that hearing. was closed. And after and was, the public hearing. So maybe after the public hearing, yes. clarify it. Yes. Yeah. And that's what you're referring to. Yes, I think. Once the correct. public hearing is closed. Correct, okay. yes. Because right. I had every opportunity as mm -hmm. a public person. Right. But right. The, it didn't come up until it was time to vote. Right. That makes so sense. Yeah, I see that now. what is the... So we don't have anything addressing that no, right no, now. No, no. So it would need to be a whole new paragraph. Yeah. Well, you How about let's finish going through this and then sure. go yeah, yeah, circle see. back to you that. Can slide it in at right. 9 and 10 because you I can can't, scratch I can't move past the yeah. spelling error here. We're going to fix. Yeah, we, we got the fix. spelling errors. There's two we found so yeah. far. Matter. Matter. Yeah. And yeah. vice thing, chairman right. is. All right, now I can move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> so number nine. Well, you don't, you don't want to have a from uh, cars over here. <laughs> number nine does not apply anymore, <laughs> so that gets stricken out. Mm -hmm. Number nine is completely struck. Well, I guess we know where we're putting the new. <laughs> yeah, the new one will be number and nine. Number ten. <laughs> yeah, and number ten is also struck. Scratch. Scratch. Okay. Right. Because that, that talks members. about alternate. Uh, we could um, cross alternate members yep. out of eleven. Out of 11, including all so, the members. Yeah, so right. number 11 is any member may make a, a, a second may motion. Make a second motion. Singular. And make and second motions. Second motions. Yes. yes. So correct. you can right. make it and second, and then strike out including alternate members who have been authorized to vote by the chairman. Yes. Yeah. And then, with, notwithstanding that the chairman presides over the meetings of the board, he, she may make and second motions and participate in the board's deliberations as may the other officers of the board. And actually, number 12 covers Rick's issue. Okay, so number 12. If anyone in attendance at a board meeting wishes to address the boards, they may do so with a permission from and at the discretion of the chairman of or a vote of majority of the members present. The chairman may define the scope of discussion and may decide when the speaker has stepped out of order or otherwise moved beyond the defined parameters of the meeting. Speakers will be allotted five minutes to speak and will not continue past the prescribed time frame. At the discretion of the chairman, an additional three minutes of time may be added to the original five minutes if deemed necessary. No one will discuss any pending litigation. Under no circumstances shall anyone other than board members be allowed to question or address anyone appearing before the board without permission of a majority of the board members present, and all such inquiries, inquiries shall be made through the chair. Mr. Chair? Yep. At the beginning, the yep. first sentence says they may do so with permission from and at the direction of you the chairman. Discretion. Do you want that to yeah. be discretion? Because it does say discretion. You, you said discretion, later. and yeah. it says direction. direction. Okay. But so, but two sentences later, it does say at the discretion. Yeah, right. So, so do you want that? Is that, does the board wish that to say at the direction no, or right. at the discretion? I think the way it's worded is fine. No. Yeah, I think it's We'll just fine. leave it the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because okay. yeah, that's just saying two things there. Yeah, yeah. well, You're I saying just. saying they may do so with permission and at the direction of the chairman so I know the but discretion where he said is discretion the I wanted to make yeah, sure that he it, wasn't wanting right. garbage change so uh, how that's how I am, am interpreting that is they would be directing their questions and concerns mm -hmm. to me I, or I the chair that, you know I understand what it is but I didn't okay. know if you wanted to change that word because you said something different which okay. obviously changes the tone of the so. whole it's, thing it's, so it's, needed to know and this looks permission like is discretion uh, right, and that's for the three minutes Webster? additional. That's Webster, exactly, is that you? That's Webster's Dictionary? <laughs> well, it's two things. It's saying that, that 
you know, they may do so with the permission from mm -hmm. and at the direction of the chairman. But he said something different than what was there, so I was oh, clear. Oh, yeah, he, 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 I he said inadvertently to, said he discretion said it, instead. But I wanted oh, to clarify. Oh, okay. Well, I'm yes. sorry. No, okay. it's okay. He said something different, but I needed to clarify okay. for us because yes, if you wanted that no, different, then we need. Okay, my bad. <laughs> no, it's it's not a <laughs> number twelve. Is is all about a board member, correct? Yes, a, a board member. So it looks like no, it's no, it's anybody that is, wants if to anyone in attendance at a boarding that includes that, board that would right. include that would encompass been, board members. I would, yeah. Yeah. yes, and when you recuse yourself, you become a member of the public, and you are a person right. in attendance. So yeah. that would be where you would get your the other three at the discretion. That would be when you could speak up with the, the permission. But of the it board. does not say at a pub, at the public hearing portion or anything like that. So it no, seems it to me like you can. Ask for that permission at any point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I think it goes like you did today. Okay, so and that's right. So then this would be talking about what what you were just. I think so. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so next. We all agree on the thirteen. Definition. If any board member misses. 40% of the regular planning board meetings in a six-month period, the planning board shall ask the Board of Selectmen to declare a de facto vacancy and to appoint a replacement. That's how you get replaced. How about the planning board may ask? I mean, if there's a reason for it, and we still have six members who are um, here most of the time. Well, this is... This is Mike go, so. Could be a... He <laughs> A health issue or something, right? Um, I don't know because shall has teeth, may does not. Um, mm -hmm. It's all a relative because this is in a six month period. So six months we have eleven meetings. So forty percent of that is you basically have to miss like five meetings yeah, in a six a month period. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you really contributing at that point? Right. I mean, you'd have to catch up a lot. And if, I mean, if you caught up, so yeah. should okay. we should we just add a clause that says that if you're up to date? Well, that, I think by changing it to May, it kind of does I that. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Or, but I think av having a clause in there that says, because like if you just miss five <laughs> meetings in a row and you don't get yourself up to date, you're gonna get kicked out, but that, yeah, but that that's gives you the permission to ask permission. that permission. Yes. The, okay, yeah. Okay. It doesn't tie your hands. But then again, you also so case have... by case, like if somebody had yeah, a, you an extended illness, you, yes. like if somebody right. was out for an extended we, illness, we, you're we, like, oh, okay, well, just never, that's reasonable. But exception. if somebody's yeah, just duffing off the them. meetings, right? Yeah, you can them. Right. That's how we got here. It also makes it, uh, we would have to keep track of Fast attendance, slogans. and it would, well, be, it would be mandatory to kick someone off the board. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, how it's written now, that's how it that's is. That's exactly It's, it's right. supposed to be a mandatory yes. thing. Right. Yes. Which there is no vote to it. Right. It's, that's right. This is, if you miss 40% of the regular meetings in a six-month period, right. you shall right. declare a de facto vacancy. Has anyone so, missed 40%? One a month. <laughs> oh no, let me think. Well, I mean, if you miss it and you don't publicly state that you're up to date, I mean, right. you can't well, vote on it. That's how you get rid of it, right? Yeah. You miss it, but you watch the meeting. Right. Right. You didn't really well, miss it. Right. right. So perhaps if you if if some of you want to keep shell instead of may, you could put a second line in there that says uh the public public acknowledgement of having previous right. having watched the missed meeting it, shall negate okay. the shall negate the absence. We're all reasonable Well, people. I think the word may kind of takes care of well, it. Well, that's what I think. Puts it at anything. their discretion. They but, actually, it, but actually, whose discretion is it at? Because all if we if we say may, then we're adding it to a vote, or we're making it a chair discretion. It's your discretion. You know what? I'd rather... Maybe we ought to leave it the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can say, uh, just as we could have tonight, I'll do it on Zoom. So you can be away and right. still right. Yeah. get yeah. I'm just and worried participate about the, in the, the meeting instead of, of just watching it on. So you got to define what misses a meeting is. So I, I guess I'm just, my only concern would be uh, the event of a, a medical emergency uh, mm -hmm. with uh, a board member or a spouse possibly that would 
cause them That'd to be miss. a long medical emergency. It would. Yeah. But it would. But it's happened in the past. Yeah. Uh, it has. But it, it has, and what happened is they got voted out or declared de facto, and someone else took their spot. And then after that said period of time, like that, because uh, it's just... When there was an opening, they, they got, they back, got back. back. Right, right. Okay, so leave it the way it is? Yeah, leave okay. It okay. It's reasonable. Okay, so number 14, these policies and procedures <coughs> may be changed or amended by a majority vote of board members present at a regular meeting after the proposed changes have been read at one previous regular meeting. So that's why we're not voting on it today. Um, Fifteen, the invalidity of any section or provision of these bylaws do not invalidate any other section or provision of these bylaws. That's, that's, that is an of. That's, that's, right. that's yeah. as legalese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then 16 is the site walks. The site walk is for informational purposes only. It is our opportunity to review the actual site to get a feel for the project. The chairman of the board conducts the site walk. If the chairman is not available, the vice chair will conduct the site walk. Please assist in keeping the site walk group together. Anyone asking questions should be encouraged to save them for the public hearing phase. Hearings are televised, which ensures uh, questions, no, ensures that it will be in the public record. It is imperative that multiple conversations between more board members and the public do not take place. <clears throat> Other board members present at the walk should refrain from taking questions from the public or providing answers, but instead direct them to the chairman. All board members shall remain together during the site walk. At no time shall a member walk away from the group to engage in private conversation, which that we just added. So the last part about at no time shall a member walk away, when we had a situation where an abutter didn't have, I'm sorry, I hit the mic, didn't have um, a physical capability of joining a member, walked over and talked to them. Yep. How we talked about that before and what needs to happen is that, um, it needs to be directed toward the chair and the chair has the discretion to go over there and discuss it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have to say that today I was primarily with the group, but at one point I found myself standing next to the fire chief and had a conversation with him today, so I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's not a perfect. I mean, so it, you're well. right. We're social people. <laughs> we're we're going to talk, yeah, right? Right. right? But I did notice that as the gentleman who was speaking, Dennis, mm -hmm. I looked around, and there were times when two or three or four of us were nearby, mm -hmm. and two or three or four of us were not, and then. We didn't all catch everything he said because, A, he wasn't necessarily talking loudly, mm -hmm. and, B, we weren't grouped together as a board. We were spread out amongst the population. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should try, mm -hmm. as a board, to be a group as a board mm -hmm. in listening to the applicant closely mm -hmm. so that we can avoid coming here and going, well, I didn't... What I was didn't it? hear that. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm not picking on Paul. No. I'm really not. No, hey, I, Paul, confe I confess. I confess. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with that, too. All right. Thank I you, have Rick. just one thing, right, Paul. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, I didn't know if on uh, when we had the session with the town attorney, and he had, when we talk about conflict of interest and going back to paragraph number eight, mm -hmm. and he had mentioned that um, if a member does have, a, if there's any appearance of a conflict of interest, that that mm -hmm. member should make a statement Just at that point and saying, yes, uh, the applicant is my brother-in-law and plows my snow, but I do feel I can be impartial in hearing this um, application mm -hmm. and uh, so he did mention that and I didn't know if you wanted to incorporate anything like that into this paragraph I, I think that's important I think that the person has an opportunity to say it looks like it's a conflict of interest but here's why not I think yeah. that you're correct I, my opinion is that maybe a self-disclosure clause well I, where I think that also would go into the <laughs> voting of it too yes because um, as long as they're allowed to discuss Right. Their part. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if someone brings that up saying, you know, it looks like this, but I can stay impartial and I will follow the land use ordinance, and right. then we could vote as a board to say, 
whether you are or not a yes. conflict of interest. That's right. Yeah. So it's really just adding a sentence to this paragraph, I believe, or two. Yes. Like after so well, like no, you said. because no. it's. Are you saying no that? regular member shall be allowed to participate or to, to vote in any discussion or deliberation of the board when that member is declared or the board has determined that the member has a conflict of interest. So during that determination is when they could talk. Right. That's yeah. when we would determine that. Oh, so and that's when that we could anything. vote. I mean, if you're going to voluntarily recuse yourself, that's one thing. That's right. But if you bring it up and we discuss it, then yeah. we're already... I think Terry's at the spot right before that last sentence you were saying because she's right. saying, should there be something in there stating that you should bring it up? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Terry? Is that mm -hmm. what you're going with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what okay. he was saying. Well, that's what you so. said. You said self-disclosure statement. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just a self-disclosure yeah. statement. Yeah. If, if you think that there could be there a might perceived... Be the yeah. Self-disclosure of a perceived conflict of interest... Mm -hmm. Uh, shall be discussed and voted on by the board. I think that's an ethics issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really is. Yeah, I mean. So we I might think, reword that though, but that's. I think that's good, good mm -hmm. foundation yeah. to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. All right. So that was a review of that. Second public comment. No one on Zoom. Hannah, do you have public comment? Hannah? No, Hannah? <laughs> no, you're not town member. Sorry. <laughs> we all looked over. Should we turn back to? We're still and waiting for the appearance of the cat. <laughs> she's in her <laughs> office. She's, oh, that's I'm right. Yeah, that's right. No cat at the office. We know you're not asleep now. <laughs> yeah, she's listening. Uh, informational items. Uh, so I have one, and I don't want to get into it because we've been here a little bit tonight um, for very long, but it basically involves Article 10 of the subdivision regulations, which is inspections and enforcement of um, approved final plans. And basically my question was, and I went into the town hall and talked to Terry about this the other day, um, what do we do after a plan leaves here in terms of, not necessarily what we do, what is the procedure when a plan leaves here finalized in terms of making sure the developers doing what they say we ask them to do. Mm -hmm. So Article 10 talks about that. Um, my question is, and, and and I have not even spoken to Irish about this at all, so I don't even know the answer. Hi. Um, <laughs> is, is, are all of these steps being followed to check on things? Um, and then going back one step back to um, section 8 in subdivision regulations, letter O in 8.2. It says a list of construction items with cost estimates that will be completed by the applicant prior to the sale of lots and evidence that the applicant has financial commitments or resources to cover these costs. This is a document that the developer will give to the planning board and code enforcement in the town, whatever, saying these construction items that cost this much are going to be done before I sell a lot. Is that list exist in any of our subdivisions that we do? And is it enforced if it, if it is? And my question is because at Woodland Pond, they are currently in the beginning stages of the project and two lots well, we are discuss. Okay. I know of a development <laughs> where they're currently in the process of working on it mm -hmm. and there are two lots for sale. Mm -hmm. So, quick answer to your questions. Yes. We received the engineer reports and any reports that I need to have provided from an actual developer, you can just turn your head to the left and ask him how it went down with me trying to get the information that I needed for MS4 because he came into the office and I said, oh, by the way, while you're here, I need you to do this. So, yes, they do get followed up on. Okay. 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 And uh, as far as that, if any, if you guys ever see anything, as far as the... Um, what they have to do, their their lists of what they have to do and providing those lists, that's how we determine what their bond is going to be. Yes, they do So post. they have to provide that because they have to provide that so they can post their, their bonds or their security bonds that allow us to allow them to even start. Okay. Okay. Performance and security bonds. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we, okay. we get those, we get that stuff. So All right. it's a short, quick answer. Perfect. Um, we do have one other informational item. So 
Y'all wanted to know information about the damn water department, but nobody answered. Two people answered Terry's email. Hey, hey, one, I answered. One, 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 one answer. Two. Two, Two answered yeah. Terry's email. Do y'all want to go on a field trip to the water department and find out how it works? Yes. We don't have any snacks. To say. <laughs> I'll make oh, no, some. No man. snacks and uh, I made snacks for everybody for Christmas, and most of y'all didn't show up to get them, so. I ate mine. You did. I you did. did. You did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, can, we, can we schedule that? What's that, Hannah? <clears throat> Are there I any left over? <laughs> you didn't come get yours either. It was s'mores park. Look, we got really it right good. here for you. We're just waiting for you. <laughs> you just can't see it. It's under the table. <laughs> Actually, I had to throw it away because it sat in the office for two weeks, and I was like, no, I'm good. Um, so, yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. Show a hand. Oh, who yes. wants to go? Yes. Field trip, field trip? Uh, how does, how does Less. You don't want to go on a field trip to the water department? <laughs> I'm falling asleep. He's like, checked out. He is minutes. checked Same. out. Same. Yeah. Past yeah. my bedtime. All right, so we'll get that scheduled. So, is there any? Does everybody have a job? Does yeah. anybody have a day off? Is Thursday there a good day? Are good. Yeah, Thursday nights. <laughs> Thursday nights. <laughs> off, off planning board nights. <laughs> Okay. How about I shoot for a late afternoon yeah. on a Thursday? That sounds great. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. When there is no planning An board. In-between. Yes. An in-between. Or in-between. sight walk. I'll yeah. bring the or beer. sight walk. Yes. yes. I'll, I'll bring the beer. <laughs> I'll see if I can make you guys some more duties. Or honor guard practice for the American League. Okay. Late afternoon on a Thursday. I'll shoot for late in January or early February. Perfect. Good. Okay. I won't be here. Mm. Thank you. You won't be here? Any other informational items? No, we don't think so. If there are no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I would make a motion that we adjourn. Second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good night.